All right. All right. I'm one of those anonymous types. I don't. Uh, That's I understand. Totally, from a face. totally understand that. Totally get you, man. I I don't. I hate Although being kicking around camera. the idea. Of, sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. Oh, I hate being in front of the camera. I I did um, I think 75 uh shows before I did did anything on camera. I I just uh, okay. hate it. So, I get it. It, it's 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 not um it's not for everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I've been kicking around the idea of eventually I will get to it, but right now I'm just a small fry, and it's not about me. It's about the stuff I'm finding is really what it's all about, anyway, right? Exactly, exactly. That's how I. That's why I call myself Beegs because I don't want people to focus on the asshole on the camera. I want to focus on the 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 data, you know right. the. The information i'm i'm unimportant just look i think you feel the same way it's just it's not um we're just people like everybody else you know yeah exactly exactly <laughs> and i kind of figured you know what like real quick what kicked off the whole thing for me was I, I started watching these videos maybe about four or five years ago of people checking out you know abandoned ghost towns and you know i found like the daily woo and all these guys and i found them fascinating right yeah. And I remember as a kid, after we moved from Quebec out here to Alberta, you know, my family growing up, we didn't have a lot of money. We didn't go to Disneyland or Hawaii for our family vacations in the summer. We went camping, stuff like that. But on the yeah. first couple of summers after we moved here, we would just find a random spot on the map and just go, go for a family drive and check it out. And if it was oh, far enough away, cool. Dad would just make sure there's a campground nearby. So when we were done checking out whatever weirdo Alberta town in the middle of buttfuck nowhere, then we could at least stay somewhere for the night, right? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So that's 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 kind of was my thing, right? So then, uh, you know, YouTube eventually started recommending John Levi, um, huh. and. Uh, Streets of Tartaria. Okay. So I, I start I start watching Streets of Tartaria before John Levi actually. Yeah. And I almost flipped my lid. I almost <laughs> lost my marbles because I'm like, wait a second, he's showing stuff in these little towns in the middle of nowhere in Utah, and the buildings that he's showing look exactly like the old buildings here where I yes. live in Calgary, Alberta. Yes. That they tell me were built in the 1890s or the 1880s or even in the 1870s. And it's exactly the same where I am. It's the same thing everywhere. And I'm like, how can that be? How can that be? How? Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it was, you know. Uh, it doesn't Caleb make any sense. Some, yeah, Caleb would go to some little town with 300 people. And there'd be this nothing little town, but they'd have like a... a, a a couple of huge buildings of brick and limestone and all fancy medallions and cartouches and sometimes they'd have uh, columns on the front always have mud flood windows the same always. kind of infrastructure in every place yeah they always had a, a mason's lodge and well, i'm thinking how can this little town of 300 people that was supposedly founded in let's say 1873 in the middle of utah <laughs> yeah. started off 12 people now there's 300 people how can it keep going and how can it have these huge churches a couple of huge buildings and how can it look identical to the huge churches and huge buildings that are in the older parts of town where i live here in calgary it didn't make any sense no so and I you don't about, question it growing up you you think it's just right. normal that's right <laughs> And then the other thing, too, was um, it was same from town to town, wherever he was going. So he could go to, and it wasn't just in a big city like Salt Lake or Provo. He could go to some little town, 300 people, go to some other little town that's four or five hours in the opposite direction. And maybe it's a bit bigger. Maybe it's a thousand or three thousand people, but it's got that same shit. And I'm like, what is going on? Yep. And because I walk everywhere here, 
because uh, I live close enough to where I work and I live close enough to everywhere I need to go. I just walk. So I, I'm seeing these this stuff that looks similar on my work. And I'm like, well, wait a second. The narrative here is the railroad didn't come until 1887. There's no brick fact, red brick, like red clay brick factories in Calgary's history. All the bricks came from Medicine Hat, which is 150 kilometers away. Wow. But the train didn't run from Medicine Hat to Calgary. So they had to come by horse and, and cart. And 150 kilometers back in the 1880s is what? A week? Wow. Because you have roads. You got to go over the prairies and through the coolies and over rivers and valleys. That's so I'm insane. really started looking at all this and going, it's insane. Yeah, so I start looking at all this and going, oh, they're telling me that this this building that I'm looking at, because I'm standing right in front of it, because it's four blocks away from the apartment building I live in, they're telling me it was built in 1902. What okay, city do you live in? But this, what, what, what I live city in Calgary, you? Alberta now. Calgary. Okay, okay. Yeah. I've, so, uh, you were recommended... Uh, building. Uh, Oz, uh, Ozbeast recommended uh, your channel to me, and um, Streets of Tartaria actually. Uh, Caleb is a good friend of mine, so. Um, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Well, Streets helped me out when I was first. I kind of oh yeah reached out to him. And said, look. I looked out, I reached out to him, and I said, "Look, man, I'm seeing the same stuff you're seeing. Only I just live in a big city, but if you go to the older parts of town, I'm seeing buildings of red brick that they tell me are built in the 1870s, but there was no red brick factories here and there was no train here in 1870. What the hell's going on? So I said, I'm going to start a channel. What do you suggest? And he gave me a little couple of hints and off I went. Where I'm looking at Calgary right now on Google Earth, what part of town is the considered the old part of town? Um, if I've got is... the river on the north side. If, if I put good right, okay. the rivers on the north. So if you head west, just out of the downtown core, basically along the river in the downtown core itself, okay. on both sides of the river, the Bow River, because there's two. There's the Elbow River, which runs north and south, and then east and west is the Bow River. Okay, I see what you're saying. Okay. So if you follow the Bow River west, just slightly out of downtown, there's neighborhoods like... Uh, like where I live in Sun Alta, uh, there's uh, uh, Hillhurst, Sunnyside. Um, what are they, uh, two and three story buildings? Yeah, two, three, sometimes four story buildings. Okay. The only major difference between the buildings that Caleb was showing and the buildings that I was seeing, it was all low windows, all red brick, but I a lot I'll tell of you times, what, let me share screen and you can tell me, uh, you can point to where I need to go. Okay. Okay. And that, because I'd like to see, um, let me know when you see uh, my my um, Google. Yeah, I see it there. Okay, so now which you, way do I go? Now, if you zoom in a little bit and move west a little bit, you'll see just past where it's the Shaw Millennium Park in green there. Go a little west of that. It says West Village, right? South of West Village is Sonata. Okay, Sonalta's where I live. Okay, Sonalta right there. Okay, and then yeah. where is the the uh, area of uh, the business buildings? Oh, okay. If you go, uh, avenues run east to west and streets run north to south, so it makes it easy. So okay. your cursor's on 11th. If you go to 10th Avenue, so one block north. Okay. Right, now head back east, east of... Uh, uh, just as you're getting into downtown, um, keep going. You're going to get into the warehouse district pretty soon. And I did a walking tour of this area. A little, little bit further east. Okay, yeah, now you're starting to see there's there's some of those buildings there. Red brick. Oh, you've gone a little far east now. They've see those high rises there. They started tearing down the old buildings. Right. Yes, they they are absolutely tearing things down. So something like in this area. Uh, yeah, well, looks interesting right there. Well, that, yeah, that's a newer building. Is it? But 
but if you go uh yeah you're right yeah if you go back one block to the left that way so you're on left avenue okay so now if you turn right okay now look at this one right there the banbury lane that's one that i took footage of Was there a section? Um, That's an old warehouse there too that they painted murals all over. Did they have a uh, section where they um, considered the downtown at the time, or is that have they destroyed it? No, that's on Stephen Avenue, right downtown. So if you go back up a little bit, Stephen Avenue is Eighth Avenue Southwest. So you basically just have to go uh, two blocks south of where you are yeah eighth eighth avenue. Avenue. yeah eighth avenue down this area here uh yeah keep going okay this is the i guess the downtown core yeah okay where it says core shopping center that looks interesting right there doesn't it yeah right in there that's where you are that's where you want to be Okay, so this was considered the, uh, wow, this is nice. Now, Calgary had a nickname after the Great Calgary Fire in 1886. They said, okay, we're not building any more wooden buildings. It's all going to be sandstone or brick or, or fieldstone. Huh. So Calgary became known as Sandstone City because of all the sandstone buildings. But there's just as many red brick buildings. Now, I found sandstone quarries here. In fact, there was a dozen at the height of... Calgary's first boom after the railroad came in. So there are sandstone quarries here. In fact, two are still used today, but no brick factories, no brickyard, no nothing. Well, you know, they might be talking about the facade. If you get up underneath the lady's skirt here, that might be a brick building. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. These are Victorian tart ups. Yeah, I would, uh, you know, it, you know, I would just, if you want a little uh, a tip, I mean, just put, use uh, Caleb's, um, the things that Caleb has learned. Just go and knock on the door and say, hey, uh, I'm interested in, in the architecture, and and I'm, I'm just wondering if, what you could tell me about it. And ask simple questions, and do you know what the building's made of, and does it have a yeah. basement, and, you know, but don't start with the basement, because it sounds a little weird. Yeah, you, you know, got but, a basement in here. Yeah. Well, you get know, out of here, weirdo. Caleb yeah. used to walk. I had to get on him about this. He used to walk into the 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 uh, stores and say, "Hey, how you doing?" Um, I was wondering, do you have a basement? They'd say, "Uh, yeah," and he'd go, "Well, can I see it?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm like, come on now, you got to, you got to warm up the butt before you stick it in the oven. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah, just yeah, yeah. oh man, you got to preheat it a bit first. Yeah, 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 I mean, it's it's that's just not gonna work, Caleb. <laughs> so he's he's slowed his roll on that. Um, and he does a lot better now. It, it's yeah, yeah. Funny. Well, I've been watching him since the since the <laughs> beginning, really, because I went back after his channel was recommended, and I watched a couple of videos. I went back and binge watched all the way from his first video. Oh yeah. Now well, this see, area, I'm pl I have not shot yet, but I'm planning on walking down Stephen Avenue and just doing like about roughly about an hour is what my walkabouts are for when I do the long format videos. Oh yeah, you can't do a whole lot. So I'm definitely going to do do this stretch Stephen Avenue. It's about ten city blocks really from asshole to breakfast time, and it's yeah. fascinating. Oh, it, it, you've got good stuff there, no doubt. And it oh. ends right at the old city hall. Matter of fact, one good. night uh, during my live show, we, uh, Oz said, let's go look at Calgary. And we went and I dropped in the wrong place and we didn't find this. I don't think we did. Because I don't I don't remember this. Yeah. See, now this was this was the bus. This used to be the main street. It since was redesignated 8th Avenue and since redesignated Stephen Avenue. This strip with all the historical stuff is called Stephen Avenue. Yeah. And there's shops, restaurants, and there's a big mall attached, and you know the usual tourist trappings. 
And if you keep following that eastward, it goes to the rodeo grounds where we have our Calgary Stampede every year. And that's the world's biggest rodeo. Oh, okay. So we got cowboys coming from Wyoming, Oklahoma, Texas, Montana, you name it. New Zealand, Australia, competing wow, for the that, world's biggest. Wow, that's big really classic. interesting because I wouldn't even uh, expect – I, I thought that was something they did here. The Rednecks did here. I wouldn't even expect that in Calgary. That's, well, let me that's tell you something, cool. my friend. The, <laughs> the narrative that you have down there about the Wild West and all that. Oh, it's horseshit. It's the exact same <laughs> narrative up here for us. Cowboys, really? Indians, Wild West. Uh, <laughs> the, whole, the whole shoot match is exactly the same. And they still hammer that narrative into our heads every year with this annual Calgary Stampede, which has been going for over 100 years strong now. I I'm, I keep getting um, put on these the wrong on the uh, sidewalks. That, oh, yeah. yeah. That, that's why I keep coming in and out. For some reason, it keeps throwing me on the sidewalk and I can't get to where I need to, to look. So bear with me. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get in there to, to see what's here. This, this helps me get that. Was I here for? Yeah, that's Stephen Avenue. That's the Bay, Hudson's Bay Company. Supposedly right now, the oldest continually operated company, the Hudson's Bay Trading Company. Those columns are nice. Jeez. Yeah, that's that's marble and all that, which is unusual for us because everything's pretty much sandstone, as you can see. And that's the big difference I was noticing between the buildings Caleb was showing on streets and what I was seeing was, yes, red brick, but he's seeing red brick and limestone, whereas I'm seeing red brick and sandstone, not as much limestone. Right, yeah. The, I think the facades were um, – that they're more um, – location specific as to what stone they used on the facade yeah but i mean this is not i i would be i'd bet dollars to donuts that every single one of these buildings is brick underneath yeah i think so too and the guy that turned me on to that was uh what's his name uh, uh ebony ebony um ah, what the bloody hell's his name I want Dave Ebony because he's over in England, right? And so he it's real easy for him to go to. Sounds familiar. Goes he goes to France, he goes to Amsterdam, he goes all over England. He can go to Ireland, Scotland. So he's shooting like buildings that we're told are built in the 1700s, but then he's going around to the back where the stone's fallen off and it's red brick underneath. Yep, definitely it. And the antiquity that he's finding up there is mind blowing. Well, there, there is a theory that um, the, that you what see bare the, copper wire coming out of the ether antennas and everything, it's crazy. Oh yeah, that in fact they found a church the here. Theory where, is the uh, that there was two groups that did this. That there were, there's a you had the quote unquote the Tartarian um, group. Right. That did the buildings where they built with brick, and then you had the Phoenicians that came in and did all the facades. Yeah, all the fancy, now, elaborate stuff. Yeah. Now I I can't it, proving it is is a whole different thing, but see where this comes from is the uh, the symbology that they use on the facading is extremely Phoenician. Yeah, that's the thing. It's all the little uh, stuff, right? Yeah. Um, and that's what Dave Ebony nothing. calls, and Dave Ebony calls a lot of that Victorian tart up. He said, like, the Victorians were, are being credited for building these buildings in the 1800s, but really all they did was they just put all the fancy shit on them. But that's well, the, I don't even know if they did that. I, I think it happened before. I think the Victorians is the, the cover story. Well, what he's suggesting is the Victorians are copying what the Phoenicians did, but to a lesser extent because the skill wasn't quite there. So he's saying that some of these buildings were Phoenician uh, uh, embellished, and then there was a, a more recent reset and then the Victorians tried to come in and fix again and sort of emulate what the Phoenicians did, and it's to a lesser degree. 
And that might be where the uh, the and that's where the Masons come, in. come in and the Odd Fellows and stuff. Could be because we have the Masons and Odd Fellows up here, and also the Shriners oh, and the sure. Elks Club and all that too, right? Oh yeah, there's a nice one right there. Yeah, I shot that one too. It's called uh, I think I called it the whole block was flooded or something like that. Wow. That's what we see in England a lot. With those little bridges of concrete over to go to the door. Well, what about the houses? Do where is there a, a mansion section in this city? Yeah, there's a couple and they're right we're close to where I am. So if you kind of go back to Sun Alta, which is west of downtown. Okay. Yeah, Sonalta. Now, if you keep moving down a bit, it says Beltline. Sorry, the other way. Um, moving west or south, I'm sorry. Move south, it says Beltline. Yeah, a little further. You should be able to start to see maybe a little further southwest. You'll see Mount Royal. Okay. Uh, so you keep going south. You're on a kind of a diagonal. Like that. Bank view, so go east from Bank view. So to your to to the right. Yeah, keep going. Okay, so in there, that's Mount Royal. And now, these are some of them are newer, some of them are older. It's peppered. Okay. And this used to be called American Hill in the Victorian era in Calgary. And then uh, just prior to World War One, because as you know, the 1900s are known as Canada's century for some reason. Uh, oh. And then it was changed to Mount Royal because all the highfalutin folks that owned all the businesses on 17th Avenue, which is just north of that area, this is where they lived. The bankers, the merchants, the landowners, the right. and so forth. It seems there's always a, a mansion, you know, area. Is another, oh, yeah. you know, key aspect to it. Yeah, so we have Mount Royal and to, to some extent Scarborough, which is where I am. It's just a little bit beyond Sonalta. It really uh, is a mix. And even where I live, even where I live, right in my neighborhood of Sonalta, there's some huge brick homes that are two floors, three floors. The problem is with Calgary is it's a boom town. So they just as soon knock down an old building and put up a skyscraper as they would try to keep it and, and repurpose it. Oh yeah. Oh oh it, it's incredible what they've knocked down. I I I'm finding things that I, j absolutely dumbfounding that they've knocked down. Just stupefying. Just why would you knock that why would you build it number one and then you knocked it down? <laughs> I mean, it's like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's a joke. Well, in the narrative for Calgary's, we had three booms in the early, early period, right? The first boom was when the Hudson's Bay Company uh, sold all the land basically west of Manitoba, which is Winnipeg, Manitoba is basically geographically right in the middle of Canada, east to west, right? So the right. narrative is that there was really nothing west of Manitoba except for wild engines. And fur trappers that work for Hudson's Bay Company. So <laughs> the federal government in 1867, when we became the Dominion of Canada, and we officially became a, a country, uh, the Hudson's Bay Company sold a bunch of land west of Manitoba to the federal government, and then they opened up the west and started parceling off and selling off all the land. Okay. But the railroad hadn't come to Alberta until... I think 1882, and that was only to our capital city, Edmonton, which is three hour drive north of where I am, and didn't come to Calgary till 1887. But Calgary had a boom with a cattle boom when they parceled off this land. Right. Then again, when the railroad came in, which was about 10 years later, and then again in the early 1920s through to the early 1930s when they discovered oil, you see. Oil <laughs> in their hills. Oh man! And basically, the narrative after discovering oil is almost identical to the narrative in San Francisco with the discovery of gold, because they didn't discover oil in what is known as Calgary, the town of Calgary, and later the city of Calgary. 
No, it's like 50 miles away. Huh. In a place called Turner Valley. But Turner Valley never boomed. But Calgary sure as hell did. So I think it was already, Calgary was already here. Well, you know, and I don't know if you know of um, how America was divvied up, but the way that um, they did it here was they did what was called land grants from the King of England. Have you heard about, did y'all have the same thing or was it done yeah, differently? Yeah, they, they had land grants and land lotteries where it's a mad dash, plant your flag in to stake your claim for your land. Just like they did in Oklahoma and just like they did in Yeah, America. but I, what I'm finding is the the land grabs was more just the extra land that they were yeah, throwing away. Land. Yeah, yeah, but the what I'm it's the the land grants that I'm finding that's the ones that actually had the cities on them and that, that they were given away. Yes, yeah, they already had grid patterned uh, plots and and lots with numbers on them that you can buy these lots here for such and such a price and all that. Yeah, yeah, same thing up here. Yes, sir, same thing. See now here the way they did it was if you um. This is kind of a, a quick nuts and bolts of it, but they would, you would say, um, I'm going to go to from England. I'm going to uh, pay for my passage and my family's passage over and my slaves' passage over to America, and I'm going to set up shop. The Lord Proprietor would uh -huh. give you a land grant that was given by the King to the Lord Proprietor to divvy up. And then yes. you were given so many acres per um, person, the head of household, and then you were given um, so many hundreds of acres per person and so many hundreds of acres per slave. And they just gave it to you. Okay, they did a little differently up here. Uh, what they did was they did have the land title holders and then they could parcel out the land. Huh? And then there was a couple of options. You could sublease the land from basically fancy way of saying sharecropping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or you could, he could divvy up a portion of his land. And, and um, I think I shot footage of that place too. I think. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've been so at it for, uh, I've been at it for uh, quite a while here on my channel already over a year yeah. now but anyway uh but what they would do then is they could say okay uh, i'll tell you what if you want this piece of land here mr immigrant from england or ireland or whatever or germany out here in alberta the the narrative is lots of germans lots of ukrainians but I, and mennonites and hutterites and all them but regardless what you could do is they basically would give you the land but then you had to work for them for three years, four years, whatever they determined the value of the land. And once you were done working the land for him, then you now owned your little section of land. See, that sounds a lot like what they called here um, the, the freedmen, um, what you would, the indentured servitude. A lot of people don't realize that a lot of the slaves that we call slaves were not slaves. They were indentured servants. And what they yeah, would they do is they would have a contract that they yeah. would work for so many years, and once they were done with their contract, then they were given parcels of land and, mm -hmm. um, you know, certain amount of money, and they were allowed to be a freed man yeah, at that yeah, time. Yeah. And yeah. the difference between a freed man and a slave is very different. Yeah, yeah. Now, the okay. thing is here is that in Canada, but as far as I understand it from the official narrative, we didn't have slavery here in Canada. I don't, yeah, I don't think you did, but I mean, by I don't the, know, but I don't think you by did. The, by the time slavery was abolished through the hard work of the Americans and the British, might I add, um, can, you know, by the time that was abolished and done with, it was after that that Canada officially became a country. But even prior to that, we didn't have official slavery. We did have indentured servitude. Yes, we did. We had debtor slaves, but we didn't have uh the sort of what you would consider the the formal where you know one human being owns another and that human that's owned is not considered a human right i i, I think I, Chinatown, it's that's another that the uh, the the people that were actual slaves um 
I, I I'm wondering if they were um that they didn't start off as slaves, but they started off as prisoners of war. Yeah, that could be too. So that's a lot of times you could earn your freedom as a prisoner of war by working it off too, right? Yeah, you're in Chinatown now, but this is actually the third version of Calgary's Chinatown. This originally was Germantown. Ah, yeah, it doesn't look. Um, it almost looks like they built on top of something. Yeah, this is real close to the river. You can see the river there in the distance there, just beyond that little gazebo looking thing. So uh, this actually did flood in 2014. Do you uh, specifically focus on this city or do you venture out to other cities or what's your focus? My focus is mainly boots on the ground in Calgary. And in more Calgary. specifically, just in the, the really old parts of town, or by the narrative, we're told are the old parts of town, like Chinatown, like where I live, like that Stephen Avenue you looked at. Um, where is the, uh, the, the first schools at? I haven't seen a school yet. Oh, if you go to, okay, uh, if you go to that Central Memorial Park that's highlighted in green, and you zoom down on that, first of all, you'll see some crazy geomancy there you'll see the carnegie library which is called memorial park library and just there's some tennis courts just a little east of that carnegie library which i shot last summer there you see those okay. tennis courts there yeah now there's a little school there that's a pretty old school the halton's the halton park and that school do you have the um a lack of better words, the 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 massive brick schools with the white uh, coins and uh, the kind of the white outlined windows. Yes. Yeah. Where are those at? Because those I think are definitely old world. Because and I find those all over the freaking country. It it's everywhere. In, in your Google search, in your uh, Google Maps search, if you just type in Sanalta. S U N A L T A school. There you go. First one yet, yeah, right there, Calgary Board of Education. Now, I shot footage of that earlier this year, but that's built on a huge hill. That's one of the earliest schools in this neighborhood. And, uh, this is just, that's a crazy looking school. Yeah. Now again, it's sandstone, not brick, but there are brick schools too. I, I'm, if you look under there, I bet you it's brick though. Probably. I bet you it is. I mean, it, that, that's how they do that. It's. In fact, type in, um, in your search window, type in Western Canada High School. Okay. And that'll take you to a brick and sandstone school. That's, you see, it's on a huge hill. It's got low windows, it's got mud flood windows, it's got tons of tech on it, it's got a bell yeah, tower. Yeah, they're not, they're not letting me get, to, maybe I could see it from here, I'm, I'm trying to get a good vantage point though, sometimes, ah, shoot, sometimes yeah, you, you can't get stop. close enough to it on the Google. Yeah, they're not letting me get too close to it. Okay, what was the other one? Uh, West Western, Western Canada High School. There it is. Okay. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Now, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is what I was asking about. This style. I don't I don't know what you call this style, but I can show you this style all over North America and uh, even Canada. I've even found these. Do you remember the movie um, A Christmas Story? Yeah, from a long time ago, but yeah. Okay, now I did a video a long time ago. It's not on YouTube anymore. Um, they uh, YouTube blocked it, um, and I I don't even know if I have it. I think I don't know if I have it on the internet anywhere or not. But I did a video on. Uh, it started off about um, I was showing how a Christmas story. I was doing a Christmas show a, a christmas okay. video right and it yep. started off as kind of a simple video where i was going to show the mud flood buildings that were used in the movie a christmas story 
Well, that turned <laughs> into doing all of uh, Cleveland, Ohio, which turned into a humongous, it was like a two and a half hour video. It was ridiculous. And so in the process of that, I found out that the school that um, they shot the movie at was actually filmed in Canada. And it was a building just like this. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, and the, yeah. see, the narrative on this building is that the, the far western wing, so the opposite of that structure, but it's exact twin. Yeah, that one right there. Yep. That's the initial original building. And it was a boys only American college type high school. So it was not co ed. It was like so this a one right private, here was the original? Yeah, it was like a private school for boys only, much like okay. the American college style high schools, right? Then they built the girls' version, which is its twin. And then in the 20s, they built that big, big, massive portion to join the two. That's the official narrative. Wow. There's a huge, crazy smokestack on the back of that school, too, by the way. That has no business on the back of a school. Yeah, I've there it um, is, yeah. kind of recently kind of figured out what those are. Those are the old steam. Uh, they're for the steam systems. That's what that is. That was for the steam power plant for the for the. Um, that's what that is. <laughs> now, see that that adjacent building to that, that. That's all considered part of the same high school, but originally that building wasn't part of the high school. It was just an adjacent building. Right. And the, and later that on, was another thing. Yeah. The, the steam plants were a, were separate from the buildings. Uh, I yep. don't know why. Uh, maybe for safety, but the steam plants were always separate from the main building. And they always had a, a square um, building, usually larger than this, and then a smokestack. Let me, there might be another building here. Um, usually it had a building kind of like, you know, this size, but they might have taken that down, and this might be, but they, this is, this is very normal. I'm finding this more and more. Um, and I'm starting to think that uh, the smokestacks that we're finding, um, you might have heard me say over and over again that smokestacks aren't smokestacks. I, I think what they are is for the old steam systems because I think the steam systems are old world. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's funny, the parking lot where that smokestack is it's a completely uh, raised parking lot. And you, if you look, you can see that it's big rectangular concrete slabs that have been laid down. So it's, it, there's a portion of that rear parking lot that's, uh, that's there's something underneath it. Just that what, little section. Now, you say that this, right the, you're saying that the, the original building was this one right here, correct? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And they're saying that these two were built later? Yeah, the, the, the one on the far right was built a couple of years later, and then the one in the middle was added to join the two uh, after World War One. Okay, so before 1943, correct? Yes. Okay, I would be willing to bet, and this is just an opinion, I would be willing to bet that all of that is horseshit and this whole thing was here. I think so too. Because um, look how symmetrical it is and look how everything matches yeah. up perfectly. Yeah, it makes a lot more sense. The brick looks the same, the ornamentation's the same, the layout, the uh it it looks right. This obviously is new. That that's yes. no doubt, no question. But I think it, it it looks the same to me. I, I think that build that complete building was there. I think they came up with a narrative to explain that they needed more time to build the building, and that's what they did. They just came up with a, a story, and um, yeah, I think well, that I yeah. <laughs> and the thing is that the by the narrative too, the official Calgary narrative is that. The very avenue that that school was on, 17th Avenue Southwest, 
At what time that was the boundary for the, the, the city, city limits, actually the town limits, even before it was a city. So everything right. beyond, according to the narrative, everything beyond 17th Avenue Southwest, so everything south of 17th Avenue was all farmland, uh, sorry, cattle grazing land, pastures, cattle pastures. Do they have a, uh, d d um, I don't know if they did the same, same things where you're at. D do they have the insane asylums there? Um, we don't, I've looked for insane asylums in Calgary and I haven't found any old world buildings that they designated as insane asylums in the 1800s. Have you I found, found a one that's labeled hospitals. as a tuberculosis hospital? No, nothing like that. I found a couple of old hospitals where they had a, uh, a wing of the hospital that was supposed to be, you know, for the mentally insane. Where but other that than it? that, no separate building. So that hospital was torn down. It's not there anymore. Ah, okay. See, so now that might be... Um, what they did was they would uh, they originally used them as originally they called them insane asylums and then once they got through doing that narrative then they came out with the tuberculosis tuber tuberculosis hospital uh yeah. designation yeah. and then they they decided oh well these buildings ain't worth a damn let's get rid of them yeah and so then some of them remained and s some of them didn't um and a lot of times you'll have a prison also. Do you have a prison? No, we don't have a prison in the city anymore. No. Again, that was, I think in the 50s, that was knocked down. We have holding <laughs> cells and, you know, and all that, but we don't have a prison in the city anymore. But, no, but you did have a prison. There was at one point a prison uh, sort of north of where you are now in the downtown core. It was kind of right around that Prince's Island Park area. I'm not, not sure exactly where it was. Where, um, okay. Where's the, uh, your water treatment plant? Uh, that is, well, we have the Glenmore Reservoir, which if you follow the Bull River West. Okay. I uh, keep following it past that bonus, past bonus park. Getting close, a little further. Oh, no, like wait, a, sorry, no, sorry, past it. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Is it like a dam? Yeah, sort of. Yeah, it's a dam and a reservoir. There's, there's the. Okay, well, what about the, uh, um, what I'm looking for is the, uh, they would have had a water treatment plant and it would have been a red brick building. Oh, well, there's an old water pump house just two blocks from my place. No, not the pump house. That would have been different. They, they would have had a, um, um, yeah, I, you know what? I don't know where the old water treatment plant was. Oh. I would assume it would be near uh, the Glenmore Reservoir. I'll show you, uh, let me show you uh, the one that um, I'm, I'm looking into, and that way you'll know what to look for. Um, let's see. Now, you're, you're not going to find this. The, the, it probably is not in use anymore. Like the one I'm going to show you now is uh, was discontinued in the 80s. Okay. Um. And but it's out. Okay. You see, downtown Raleigh is right here. Uh huh. And then the water treatment is. Let's see. Right there. Um. It's this area right here. Okay. And they had these reservoirs here for the uh, collection of the water, and then the treatment plant is here. Ah, uh, yeah, I see. Okay, yep. And so what that is is an old world treatment plant. And it's massive. Yeah, that's a huge bugger. And so, and, and another thing is it's absolutely exquisite inside. The, the mechanisms are, are just beautiful. 
they're just absolutely decadent in 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 how it's presented. You walk in here and it's like a um like a cathedral inside at how clean and the gears and mechanisms and the dials and the the pressure gauges is it, it's uh-huh. yeah. oh, it's amazing. It's like are you shitting me? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Now I don't it, see that I don't the thing is that see I was born in Montreal, lived in Montreal until I was 10 years old, then we moved to Calgary. And I had never heard of Calgary when I was a kid. I barely heard of Alberta, just what I knew from on the map in school, kind of. Yeah. Thing. So then we moved out here, and I was inundated with the whole narrative of the cowboys, and it was the Wild West, and they got this here Calgary Stampede every year, and people dress up in their Western garb for that whole 10 days of the Stampede. And so by the time I got interested in the stuff that we're talking about now, which was really only a couple of years ago when I really started doing a deeper dive into it. Again, I was just kind of noticing stuff in my immediate area. And I think by the time a lot of this kind of came to my awareness, a lot of these old buildings are now completely gone and I didn't, and I never knew where they were to start with. You know what I mean? Right. It, it is very difficult to retrace it. What, uh did you where do you have a train station yeah the oldest train station is um let's see where are you there uh, if you go okay if you go uh, uh what's the easiest way to find it type it in your google maps type in ruloville r o u l e a u uh, there it is, Ruloville Square, 17th Avenue Southwest. Okay. Now, where Alrighty. it says St. Mary's Cathedral. Right. Next to that, there's sort of a blue highlight there. A blue bubble. Yeah, that is the oldest remaining. Uh, yeah, it looks like a train station. Rail, rail station. Okay, now, um, there will there will have been um, p- possibly in, in uh, your location what's called a roundhouse. Well, I'm 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 looking for the roundhouse, and I think I found where it used to be, but it's gone. R- right, a lot of them are, are gone, but a lot of times they will leave the round. Now, here's the reason I asked for the, the train station. Um, the train would have had the roundhouse near the uh, train station. Now, here, I'm just, this is what's standing out to me. You see this sucker right here? Yeah. I would research that location right there. Because well, I... I- I know where the CP, the Canadian Pacific Roundhouse was, uh, which is in Inglewood. And I used to live real close to it. And that's the other thing that, that I do. Well, they, they would have had, uh, they might, sometimes they had two of them. Uh, oh, like, sure. They would well, have, we like, a, um, we there would be one that would be kind of for the, uh, well, it depends on the railroad. But sometimes they would have one for each railroad, for the main railroads. And then other times they would have, you know, kind of one that was for like the the consumer, uh, the passenger trains and another for the freight trains. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we had we have two railways up here in Canada since the 1860s. Well, earlier than that, but out west here. I think the railroads were already here. Um, Yeah, I I think all that was here. Me Um, too. But we had CP Rail and CN Rail, so Canadian Pacific and Canadian National. And where this Canadian Pacific roundhouse was is in Inglewood, which is a little bit south of where you are right now, actually. Okay, Inglewood. Hmm. Uh, let's see. I don't think it's going to say Inglewood. It's going to be known as... Uh... Okay, what you've got to do is go a little bit north of where you are. Okay, where it's, where it's, uh, yeah, a little further, and now go east. Okay. 
Okay, now where it says Crossroads Market in blue there. Okay. Just a little bit north of that, you'll see the there's a bunch of railway, or sorry, south of that. On right, States. right there, there you it is. You see a whole bunch of railway oh, yeah. tracks. Now that's the old it. roundhouse was in there, but it's gone. Yeah, that's it. It it um it was. Let's see if we can find it. Um, let's see the trains. Came in. A lot of times you can see the footprint of it. Yeah, looking for the sort of the ghost of it. Yeah. It might have been in here. It's right in where that whole mess. I bet you it was track. right there. I I I I bet right there or somewhere. That's where I think it would be right there. That's where I think it was. Was right in the perimeter of that whole mess of track where it kind of bulges out a little bit there. Yep. So I they plan had on going two there buildings. I they they had a, a roundhouse, which was the main, the main, um, the building, the round building where they would uh, service the units and give them their daily clean out. And then they would have a, um, I forget the name of the second building, but they would have a, um, a second building where they would take a train that needed an overhaul and they, they could literally take a train apart. Yeah, yeah they had the barns like a, and the roundhouse. Yeah, that right, the barn, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, because that's the other thing I do a lot of my channels. I show a lot of old footage of old steam locomotives cuz that just cuz that's my thing. I love those old things. Oh yeah. So I find a lot of old footage from the 1800s early 1900s of these old trains and I I throw those up on the channel too just cuz it's my passion. I love old trains. I have a lot of those pictures of the trains. <clears throat> tons I, I i didn't used to show them because i it wasn't mud flood stuff um but i've started showing them more and more because people seem to like them um but i don't show too many i i can't show everything like i have tons and tons of the ship pictures i just don't i just don't show um yeah yeah that's it that that's definitely part of it Am I, uh, Biggs, am I able to share a screen on here too? Yeah, uh, let me, uh, let me stop my share. Let me figure out how to stop my share. <laughs> okay, that, wait, confirm, stop sharing. Okay, now you should be able to share screen. But I was looking sort of here in the sort of north central Alberta, kind of in the middle of nowhere, because I was seeing all these goofy geographic anomalies, right? Okay. And then I was kind of looking around in some of these little tiny little areas that like, why did that develop there? So I was kind of looking around in these areas for star forts and stuff, right? Because I figured, hey, you know, maybe that's where I would find them. But then I came across something that was completely different. Have you ever seen anything? This is a creek bed. Have you ever seen a creek change its mind this many times in this short of a distance? Yeah, that's weird. Creek. Look, look at that. This is where the creek goes now. But wow. what, are all, what are all these? Like, sure, I understand water takes the path of least resistance. Sometimes on a tight curve here, the water slows down and sedimentation will build up and then it might divert itself. But I mean, come on, this many times over this, all, this whole area. Yeah, that's strange. That's I've definitely never weird. seen that anywhere before. And then here now it goes back to sort of single, but then when you go up a little further, it starts kind of messing around again. And I was just wondering if you've ever seen anything like that before. No, I've not seen that. I think it was that another, is, spot, um, another spot kind of up in here where it seems to have changed its mind a few times throughout here are mm, they're they're not old canals are they i mean because the the canals were here too oh. yeah no those aren't canals but alberta has a buttload of canals too that are way too massive to have an undertaking for again the narrative of what they say oh uh, yeah they, they we've got these canals here that's like oh yeah we dug them but then there's there's like no evidence that we dug them at all <laughs> yeah 
like what these cattle ranchers about? and farmers supposedly built these huge canal systems that you know just go <laughs> like, like just go everywhere they make sure that they go to each little plot to each little section of the land this here isn't that's not a creek here that's all the canal and it just keeps and it branches off and it keeps going and then it spills into these little it feeds these little ponds in and around here and then it just keeps going like this is the canal here and i try to zoom in close but then of course the detail you lose the detail well that's not a country road that's the canal and it just keeps going and going and alberta is the size of texas by the way just so you know we're almost the same square million mileage as Texas. Like you can see, Alberta is huge. Yeah. And those canals go from Calgary all through all these little farming towns, all these little communities. And everywhere where you see a little tiny little lake or pond, those canals are feeding all of those. So supposedly, supposedly if and they tell you it was five ice. years that had to build sod huts to live in because there's there's no trees here this bald ass prairie now nothing but coolies and sagebrush and wild indians and buffalo no trees so they couldn't build log cabins they had to build their sod houses but they, then they could build this massive canal system and here's some more crazy squiggly well this one didn't really look like it changed its mind though but but yeah the canal thing was another one and then I'm like, I, I can't get too deep into that because then I'll just go down another crazy yeah, rabbit hole. It's hard to, uh, you know, here in America, we have so many trees that it's hard to see stuff like that. Yeah. That is whack. I don't know. But there's some, uh, there's that, that squiggly. That squiggly thing just I when I saw that I'm like what is this I gotta put a pin in that where is that can you show me that um again like but like the area that it's at um yeah it's near this hay lake it, that's north of Alberta that's north northern Alberta almost this is what they call uh I think this okay is so lake. the northwest quadrant of Alberta yeah, northwest quite right past this big all-seeing eye, the eye of Alberta. <laughs> they don't call it that. I just called it that just now. I just coined it. It's mine. It, that's it. It's weird looking, that's for sure. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Well, when you zoom into it, I think it's like what we call muskeg, like tundra. Like it's water with like mossy land floating on it. What what did they tell you that the glaciers went across and scraped all this shit up? Is that the yeah idea? yeah the narrative is the glaciers came all the way down, sort of came all the way down. It, the, here's the Canadian Rockies, right? Yeah, that's what separates Alberta from British Columbia. So you had the they tell I, us we had one glacier here, the other one here, and it came all the way down to the Great Lakes region. So all this was supposedly under a mile of ice. I've just never had like that's always been a strange concept to me. I've never really followed that idea. I don't know. Well, and that's what because here's Winnipeg and the, the star fort they found in Winnipeg is I'm not sure exactly where it is. I forgot to mark it, but it's somewhere in sort of north central Winnipeg. So by their narrative, if the glacier came all the way down here, it would have completely obliterated that star fort, but no, the star fort is still there. So it's yeah, it's really weird. It's crazy I mean, stuff. There, there's something to be said that we can find the same things, the same styles construction, the same symbols, the same anomalies all all around the world, and especially in um, North America, South America um and uh australia yeah it's almost uh, like there were schools there was like the european schools where the buildings were by the narrative older and they by our 
investigations look a little bit more ornate and a little larger. Then you come to the so-called new world and the style is the same, but it's on a slightly smaller scale. And then we're told, well, it's because we copied the old world style, so it's it's newer and smaller. Yeah, I, and I, I don't I don't buy it. I think it, you know it's weird when you um, when you start looking into the history. Um, if you go back and 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 look at the original buildings that were there, that's when it really gets crazy because. It actually look the more the the further back you go and the more buildings you re add to the story, the more you realize it actually did look more like Europe than it did than we think. Yeah, and that's what I'm finding with some of these buildings. And the yeah, some of them look very <laughs> sim similar, if not identical, to the European cathedrals and so on. And yeah, some of them are smaller, but not all of them are. I mean, I'm finding five-story red brick buildings here that they're telling me were built in 1880s. And I'm like, wait a sec, wait a second. They didn't make red brick in Calgary. You know, I think that they, I think there's some evidence or the possibility that there was a major, um, lack of better words, bombing campaign here. Um, that there was some major, um, maybe war where they they d destructed a lot of the stuff prior to anybody coming because you know you've got the um the carolina bays and then um i forget who did the what channel did i think it might have been conspiracy rs where he traced out was talking about the tracing of the the carolina bays and the uh, um there was uh, they they determined that um there was it what looks like bombing runs that came out of the uh, out of the Canadian region above Chicago. Okay, yeah. And uh, I was, always felt thought that was really fascinating. That um, I don't know. Some it's like something happened that I don't think I don't know what I'm trying to say. I don't think that the same thing. Um happened in here that happened in Europe. I think it, there was two different, maybe not different things, but it happened at two different times or there was, because there's so much more history in Europe. And that's, yeah. that's undeniable. It's there. Yes. Yeah. So well, even if you just look at populations, it's more heavily populated. So one would just logically assume that if people are going to migrate anywhere, they're going to migrate, generally speaking, out of crowded areas into newer areas where they can sort of uh, try to thrive in those newer areas. Right. But, yeah, I don't know, man. Like, can you see what I'm sharing now, the Louisiana Purchase? No. Oh. Hmm. Retrace your steps on how you did that before, because that worked. Okay, let me just try closing all this stuff down. It may not like your photo program. So you might try a different photo program. I, it Sometimes things aren't compatible with each other, but it, it like that you were on Google right then, right? Before? Uh, yeah, earlier I was on the Google, yeah. Let's see if it'll work here. Yeah, this. Should be it, I think. Okay, I see it. All right. Now, remember when we were talking in email back and forth about the Louisiana Purchase? Yeah. So that was 1803, right? Okay. And what I noticed, I noticed this a while back too, is that part of the land that they designated that belonged to France was sold to the U.S. creeps up here into my neck of the woods. Yeah, that line is awful high. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, can you see this next one? Okay. You see this one? So yep. here, see this dotted line here? That's what. That's the border. So okay. this is now our, this is our modern border. This is the border that was established once 
you know, the U.S. and the Canada were established. Okay, we're friendly neighbors. Hi, how are you? How are you, neighbor? Boom. So, like, Calgary is right basically where this U is for Hudson's Bay Company, which is they owned all this land, you see. It didn't oh. belong to Canada yet. Oh. Calgary is, like, right in here. So, yeah. at one time, the Louisiana territories came up into my neck of the woods. So that's another reason reason why I'm not shocked at all of the whole wild Indians, no man's land, wild frontier narrative, because the narrative that you guys were getting down here from the Carolinas, where you are in Kentucky and so on, was that, oh, all well, in here, that's all them wild Indians. That, that makes a lot of sense, yeah. And getting that same narrative up here. And then... Now, if you go to older source maps, it even says parts unknown in where yeah, sort of Louisiana that, yeah. territory is. Yeah. And the funny thing is that uh, in that first map, it shows you Lewis and Clark. So Lewis and Clark went through right after the Louisiana Purchase. Louisiana Purchase, 1803. 1804, boom, Lewis and Clark are right in there. Right. So it couldn't have been parts unknown for very long. They've already got Crow here, or Crow, uh, you know, native indigenous peoples, right? The Shoshone, the Cheyenne, the Sioux, the Dakota. Up here, it's Blackfeet, which is a misnomer. It's actually Blackfoot. They're the Blackfoot Indian. We have Stony and Pagan up here. We have Sioux, the Crow, Blood Indian as well. Were those originally the there, or were they pushed up there by the asshole? Well, <laughs> that's the thing is that this parts unknown was because i i think the same thing is our native a lot of our native indigenous peoples were much like in the u.s were living around bodies of water like the algonquins and the ojibwa and the mohicans and all of them and what happens is as Canada opened up, and as the U.S. opened up and expanded, they got pushed further and further. So here you have your Indian territories. We had the same thing in what became known as the province of Manitoba. That originally was our Indian territories. And west of Manitoba, which is roughly here, it's there's there's nothing. Parts unknown. <laughs> and we had our own version of Lewis and Clark go through right at around the same time. And his name was David Thompson. And he was commissioned by the Hudson's Bay Company to explore the West. And he explored basically, uh, you know, maybe 100 miles north of Lewis and Clark, right all along in here. He was a 19-year-old kid sent out from out east by the Hudson's Bay Company. Hey, go check out these northern territories, these parts unknown. Report <laughs> back to us. He was a top topographer, a part-time trapper. And, uh, you know, uh, an adventurer kind of a guy. But he was just a kid. And apparently he spent the winter along the banks of the Bow River, where Calgary is now, basically, at 19 years old. And same kind of narrative that's familiar to you guys down in the U.S. He would have died from the freezing cold blizzards out here in the prairies had not been for the Indians that come and showed him how to live. I was waiting for you to say Indian. <laughs> yeah. The Indians have to oh, show how to survive. Man. It's like you so didn't yeah, even that, have to finish. I knew where you were going with it because it was, it's the yeah. it's same horseshit. It's like a stamp that they, it's like the story is stamped with the same bullshit. Incredible. Yeah, and it's like, well, these, these crazy Canucks up here ain't going to talk down here to these here folks for a long time, and by the time they do talk to one another, they're not going to remember that these narratives are all hanky, so it's fine. Got some nice pictures of old Calgary. That's here crazy. Too. Hey, what I got a question about, do you know the, um, I don't know which map it is, but the the, the map that, that has uh, the Tartarian um, tents up there in Canada? Yeah, where it's uh, the Tartarian territory is color colored in pink, and it goes across into North America. I've yeah, seen but it, that, yeah. Yeah, but it has the actual Tartarian. It says Tartaria 
or Tartarian, and then it has a teepee, like a like a tent. And it's oh. it's it's kind of in the middle um, of the. I was just wondering where that where you think that pin on the map is today. There's those lions, by the way. Wow. Yeah, that's old school. There's four of them. Two here and then two down at the other end there. Are y'all finding the tunnels up there too? The brick tunnels? Or have you found those yet? Um, uh, there are some tunnels under the downtown, but the problem is, is that they've been reused to now be um, part of the existing streetcar and subway system so they've been completely refurbished and it's all poured concrete and all modern now so all the uh, old brick tunnels with the the sort of the the arched roof to the tunnels that's all gone yeah they're they're uh down here they're finding um they're doing projects and they're finding the old world brick tunnels and they're fine like uh they they found them in um it's either Seattle or uh, San Francisco. I want to say San Francisco. They found them in uh, Charleston, South Carolina, and in Tampa, Florida, but other and more. But it's they're finding them more and more as people are doing work. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I know nobody found... has any idea what they are, where they came from, who built them, nothing, and they're all brick, 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 brick. Yeah. Well, I know there's a tunnel that went from one of the big fancy hotels in downtown Calgary, the Palliser Hotel, which was built in the 1890s. There was a tunnel that went from that to a sandstone office building two blocks away that in the lower floor, like the underground floor of that office building was a speakeasy. So yeah. during the temperance movement and during prohibition, yeah, same they, narrative here. People that yep. stayed in that hotel could supposedly buy that same old familiar narrative, could get down into the tunnels and go across the speakeasy, have a good old time, and sneak back to their hotel. Same there's bullshit actually tunnels, here. Wait there's a minute. A well, hold, hold on. Wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold the press. Uh huh. Y'all had prohibition too? Well, we had. It wasn't prohibition. We had what was called the temperance movement. Oh, okay. And it was in about, I think it was in the 19 teens. It was maybe a decade, decade and a half before you guys had your prohibition. Oh, but it only okay. Lasted, so you had the same thing, just called it something different. It was a little bit earlier. Oh. Yeah, and it was, didn't go into law. It was <laughs> based on your moral decision making. Right, okay. It was passed through legislation on a local level, so provincially, our provinces, much like your states down there, but it was right. never enacted in, on a formal law. But it only lasted about two or three years. Everybody bitched about it so much, and everybody knew that everybody was drinking anyways, including the politicians, that they eventually just said, out of the hell with it. Yep. I, I've come to the conclusion that the that prohibition was literally a way for them to explain why there were so many tunnels underneath the cities. Because well, every a, time you hear, oh, well, those are prohibition tunnels. Yeah. Well, there's a... <laughs> back to well, the when the fuck here. did they build them? <laughs> I mean, you know, it, it, a, seriously, you don't just build tunnels underneath the ground with nobody knowing. Yeah, that somebody's going to know about it because you're going to have to have people to build them. And if you only got a thousand people in your town, say half of them are men, say half of those men are of working age men. So you only got a couple of hundred men. But well, not, not only that, that you've got the, the damn uh, the, build the, 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 the top of the damn tunnels are usually the vaults, which are basically have the sidewalk right over them. You couldn't build that without the it being open. Yeah, yeah. So how the hell would you first. build it and nobody know about it? it? It makes no sense. Yeah, well, they're just finding out. See, here's on this map, like Winnipeg, Manitoba, Manitoba, the province right here. In between Manitoba, or uh, yeah, Manitoba and Alberta, where I live, is a province called Saskatchewan. And okay. in Saskatchewan, there's a town real close to the American border called Moose Jaw. And apparently, there was a direct train line from Moose Jaw 
right down into uh, Illinois, I think. Anyway, supposedly there's a link, they say, because there's a shitload of underground tunnels in Moose Jaw, which is a pretty small city, even by Canadian standards, only a couple hundred thousand people. But okay. there's, there's tunnels all underneath Moose Jaw for the Canadian whiskey because Al Capone supposedly used to run Canadian whiskey out of Moose Jaw. It was, it was one of his, you know, many <laughs> tentacles that spread out in his booze empire during Prohibition. So there's right. a whole narrative in Moose Jaw that it's called Little Chicago and uh, Al Capone had been seen up there, and there's these underground tunnels underneath the hotel where the speakeasy was down there, and that's where he could go and drink, and that's where they made the booze and smuggled it out of there. And I'm like, well, wait a second. Why did we have to have speakeasies? We never had prohibition. We only just had the temperance movement, and that only lasted three or four years. Jeez. I was trying to find that map with the... Um, the... Uh, tent on it i i've got so many maps i can't i can't decipher decipher one from the other let me see if i can look it up have you ever seen that map i i think i have seen it yeah let me see if i could find it too while while we're at it i remember it was one of the higher resolution maps um that that is definitely something I remember. Um, I wish I could remember which. See, I don't focus um, a lot on maps. Um, it's just there's there's too many maps, and I just it's not something I've put a lot of focus into. Yeah, me neither, to be honest with you. I, I, again, like I just basically just try to take good video footage and really try to explore as close as I can, you know, the stuff that I immediately right here in my area. I mean, why go on Google Earth and Google Maps and globe trot all over the place, even though it ain't a globe? Yeah. Uh, yeah let's say the four corners of the Earth, let's say, or the four quarters of the Earth, when I'm seeing stuff like within literally two blocks away from where I live, right? Right. So the only thing that I get sidetracked in are, are them old trains. I just love them old trains. I, I'm, I'm trying to stick to America um, for the most part just because it's, you know, kind of you like you're saying, go with what you know and, and go where yeah. you are. And um, I, I don't really a lot of people ask me to, to to look at other places, but it's like, you know, we've got people that are looking at those other places. I, I mean, I think that their voice on that is better than mine. I'm not there. Yeah. Oh, here. Well, I've got a subscriber. He, he may also subscribe to you. He's very insightful. He's got his own channel. And he's great. He's always been a huge support of me and encouraging me. And uh, his channel name is Marcus Christians. And he said something to me in a comment one time, like left a comment under one of my videos I found very interesting. It was something to the effect of, and I'm paraphrasing very much so, but something okay. to the effect of each of us have our own role to play in this community. Some of us do boots on the ground. Some of us look at old documents. Some of us look at old photographs. Some of us go out and actually buy uh, old antiques, old machinery, old equipment, old yeah. maps. Each of us kind of contribute to this research in our own way through our own comfortable comfort level and what we're familiar with i i'm only really familiar with montreal and calgary so that's right. all i look at the san francisco stuff is fascinating the paris france stuff fascinating oh yeah but, but there's a lot of other channels that can do boots on the ground because they live in san francisco or in paris exactly so i'm not gonna bother really looking into it too much when i can just go to their channel so I'm going to focus on what I can see and what I can document right here in my hometown in real time, edit yeah. as quickly as I can, put it up as quick as I can, and share it with people. And the idea was I want people, other Canadians and other people in wherever, all over the all over the world, to go and look around in your little town. Because I'm willing right. to bet dollars to good Canadian donuts 
that Absolutely. you're going to find the same stuff Caleb's finding in Utah, I'm finding in Alberta, you're finding in the Carolinas. Everybody's finding everywhere. Yep. You're going to find it in some little town in England, some goofy little place in the middle of Romania. It's all going to be very similar. And it doesn't That's have what to I'm be trying to do. I'm trying to share, teach people or get, teach people and get people to see to get out there and encourage them to do it themselves because this stuff is being erased right before our eyes and we need people to get out there and do this. I don't do boots on the ground because I don't drive. So, right. and, and I'm in the middle of the country. So it's, it's literally 10 miles in any direction to get to it or seven to 10 miles, any direction to get to anything. Right. So it's, it's not, I'm not going to do that, but I can do what I do. Right. So yeah, everybody does a little bit. Um, yeah. And I don't see, I don't drive either. And I'd love to go and explore the middle of nowhere, Alberta, because I know damn well, there's little towns, yeah. 300 people to 3000 people that have a lot of these same buildings. My dad and actually, my dad and I actually did a quick drive through of a little town in sort of I don't know, central Alberta, because we were on a fishing trip and we stopped there to get gas and we were driving through the town and I said, Dad, will you look at this shit? Yeah. Look at these old brick buildings. And this town's further away from Medicine Hat, where all the bricks came from, than Calgary is. And it took the railroad even longer to get up there. And so I said, Dad, can you, like, can you explain this? And he says, I can't explain it. it it's, they kind of come horse and cart, son, because the railroad didn't come through here until 1904. And that building right there says 1884. Yeah. Jeez. And it's this little town of about 2,000 people, about an hour, hour and a half drive north of Calgary. And it's not even on the main highway. It's slightly off the main highway. So it's kind of in the middle of nowhere. It's called the Urbano Monte map. Oh, okay. And I've got it on somewhere, and I don't know where, but it's called the Urbano um, Monte. It's the, I don't know if you've ever seen it, but it's it's a map that's really, really big. It, it's phenomenal big. Um, Urbano Monte map. Yeah, there it is. That's I've got sweet. it, the whole thing somewhere on my computer, but hell if I know where. Yeah, it's that big uh, square map. Yeah, yeah. It, it's yeah. it's really big. It's not. It's from. I forget how years. big, but it's massive, big. I think um, I think Campbell at Autodidactic showed that map recently. And and, and on that map, I'm trying to. Oh, there, there's a website somewhere where you can go and look at this thing and it's um you're able to see the real detail but you've it's so big you got to have a, a massive uh you you really have to have a big detailed um map in order to see it here's one that's pretty good let's see if i can see if i can get in there uh oh this one might i think i might have found one now i gotta find i gotta find america <laughs> okay Man, you I, are lost if you can't find america well it, it looks different it, it it well it's it's like looking at a flat earth map so it's a little bit weird oh and it's it's cockeyed let me try to oh boy what did i do uh i did something weird don't do that let me let me see i just put in the chat too the link to that autodidactics uh video he did on that circling the square here i'll, I'll share the screen i'm i'm sitting here talking about something i could show you um yeah that's the one I'm trying to get it turned to where we can look at the right spot. Okay, America. Dang it. Every time I turn, I get lost. Okay, that's it. That's what we need right there. Yeah, there's where we need. Yeah. Okay, it takes a second for it to focus in. And then. 
I think it's in here. There's your TPs, yeah. There'll be something um, that says Tartaria. So look for something reading, and it's near some lakes, I think. I remember it being like right here. I'm probably looking right at it. Or it says Tartaria or Tartars or. I know it says Terra Incognito up there too, just like it says in uh, Antarctic. <clears throat> I'm guessing that this is kind of like Alaska, maybe. Yeah, yeah, Alaska and Yukon. Yeah. Maybe it's lower. I don't. I don't remember. I remember it being. Uh, Gosh, I'm not seeing it. I know it's there. I've seen it. It's probably close to that lake right there, that Lago Canibar. <clears throat> Gosh, I'm not seeing it. I remember it's. it, it had stuff just like this. There it is. Tartaria. Tartary. Oh, uh, yeah, I like company, Montadon, okay, uh, just, uh, a la campagna, uh, Mondo de Tarte, okay, that's Spanish, it's close okay. to French, so I can kind of make it. bring it out, and let's see if you can figure out where that is, it's right here, and then Florida's here, California's here, this yeah. might be the Great Lakes. I don't know. Yeah, I'm wondering if that's that might be Manitoba. That might be like in and around Winnipeg, Manitoba, near Lake Winnipeg. Check that out. It's got a griffin right there. That's crazy. See, that says uh, Lake Conibus. Um. What's weird is now that now this is a, a debate that's gone on and on is the where was Lake Conibus? And I think, in my opinion, Lake Conibus was over here. But, you know, I, I don't know. It, it's. I mean, how do we know how, how accurate are these maps? Are we, you know. Well, and that's the thing is that it's, I'm not seeing Hudson's Bay or James Bay. I'm seeing the St. Lawrence. I'm seeing some lakes that look like maybe they're supposed to be representing the Great Lakes. Iro is that the Iroquois? Maybe? I don't know. I'm, that's... It could be, yeah. I mean, the it's not spelled right, but it's maybe? I don't know. I, I'm, I'm shooting in the dark here. <laughs> this is... I'm not a, uh, you know... I'm not a mapper, you know, I don't, I don't use maps to, I use maps kind of sparringly um, because they're so inaccurate and they're so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, it's really, you know, especially this map is it's because it's supposedly so old that it's just, it's hard to even figure out <clears throat> what's in these This is right about. here is important because when people say, well, Tartaria was not in, in, you know, North America. Well, well, why is it on the damn map? <laughs> you yes, know, it right here. Clearly says Tartary right there. Right there, clear as bell, undeniable. You know, kiss my ass, <laughs> both sides. <laughs> you know, and I'm not saying Tartaria was a was North America. That's not what I'm saying, and it's not, I don't think that's what you're saying either. But it's clear that there was a presence in some way, shape, or form of that country here. Yeah, I mean, why incorporate that name to the supposed, still at this point, uh, you know, Terra Incognito New World, supposedly, right? And this is supposed to be Tartary right here. So let me, let yeah. me see if I can, uh, let's look at that for a second. Okay, where was a, every time I turn this thing, I get, oh, oh okay, it's going the wrong way. Only. You got to bear with me because it only turns one direction. Okay, that should be right. Yeah. Okay, Tartaria should have been right here. 
Yeah. Look at that. Tar yeah. Taro. Yeah. 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 Yeah, the Tartarian Sea is what that is. Or Sea of Tartaria, if you prefer. So, I mean, you know, the, it, it's there. You know, it. there's the... They didn't erase it all. They weren't as good as they think they were. But, um... You know, we're, we're we're piecing it back together. I mean, the best we can. I don't think we're ever going to have it perfect, but I don't know. We're if we can just prove that something happened. You know that. I think that's the first step is proving that this thing actually occurred in some way, shape, or form. How that occurred and the details are a whole different thing. You know. Yeah, well, that and that's the thing, right? I don't know how we do it. You know, I'm, I'm, I think about it all the time. Like, what, you know, what? We, when I get up in the morning, I think, okay, what am I gonna do to show people what I'm seeing? You know, how do I share that with people? And I try to well, find. Well, that's why. I tr you know, that's why I try to be specific to where I am, because I have a lot of people commenting on my thing. Oh, oh, uh, you know, uh, oh, it wasn't a mud flood. It was all melted. And I'm like, well, OK, I mean, I have seen other channels show pictures of bill that of things that do look. I'm not talking about who you think I'm talking about. I'm talking about, OK, there's there's pictures here that that does look like at one time it could have been. A melted building, but much, much older. And we're not talking 1800s. We're talking 1600s, 1500s, 1400s, you know. So I'm like, yeah, okay. That I, I said, but I, my response to this commenter was like, look, I, I'm not seeing that in my immediate area where I live. I'm and not that, seeing evidence of melted buildings the head right here there. in Calgary. I'm that, seeing evidence of potential mud flood here in Calgary. I'm not right. seeing potential melted buildings here in Calgary. Now, does that mean that it didn't happen in Toronto or Montreal or Vancouver? Possibly. It, right. I'm just not seeing it here. Or yeah. maybe it happened in Alberta, but not in Calgary. That That is the point that I'm trying to drive home to people is that it's, no, it depends on your location what happened, that there's different things going on. It's like John's video today. He was going on and on about how he was in Utah and going out in this desert area and he was showing the, the what he thought were melted buildings in his area. Now, I am not on the, I'm not, I'm not saying they are melted buildings or not melted buildings because I don't think just looking from a distance, you can make that determination. But here's the thing, the, 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 the structures, for lack of better words, whether they're mountains or buildings or melted buildings, whatever they are that he's looking at there in Utah mm -hmm. is not, I repeat, not the same thing that are in North Carolina mountains. They're different. Yeah. And so when people say mountains are melted buildings, it pisses me off because, you know what, maybe there are some what you call mountains that are melted buildings but what i see in my area is not what you're saying and they will not hear it they shut you down the the argument the the conversation just comes to a standstill as soon as you disagree with them that mm -hmm. not everything is melted and then it's like well what about mud flood then they say well there is no mud flood they think there was this brick ash flood and and they but then you you like okay well explain that they can't explain it we don't know how yeah. it happened we, we don't know it's x factor See, i'm of the i'm of the i'm of the What's thought that? that depending where you live in this realm and whatever the event was yeah how it how how it spewed forth as an event depended on where you were geographically so, for example, well, what we don't get earthquakes. Frame? Both. It could well, have happened at different times, and it's two well, different, too. or three different, or ten different events. Sure, 
like we don't have volcanoes or earthquakes here in Alberta. So if there was a reset event that destroyed stuff, it wouldn't have it, our stuff here in Calgary that I'm seeing wouldn't have been destroyed by volcano or earthquake. I'm seeing it was destroyed by m what we call mud flood. That's what I'm whatever seeing. that is. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing now. I mean, I have my theory on on how it happened, but the re but see, I have I really have two mud flood theories. I have theory A, which is the man made mud flood, mm -hmm. which I don't know if you've watched my video on it, but I have my own theory on on that. Yeah, and then I have a secondary theory, which actually I think is more plausible. But I have no way to prove it, and that is that it's all a simulation, and they just changed the matrix. Right, okay, I see what you mean. And an example now, of that would be those squiggly creek bed that I showed you in northern Alberta. Exactly. It, that's I mean, like a glitch in the matrix to me almost, you know what I'm saying? It, it's, you know, I think we don't give, people don't give the creator or God or whatever you want to call it, the the... The, the the source of everything that the the creator of this room I don't think we give that creator enough credit as to what can be done and the way yeah, I sucks. see it is that the creator has the ability to create this I call it God's holodeck and that God can create in God's mind this world this universe or multiverse or whatever we live in in yeah. God's mind, and it's all a simulation. It's not a computer simulation. It's a, a it's 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 a, it's God's well, it's mind. Like a, it's almost like a biochemical electrical simulation, yeah. as opposed to yeah. a, a nuts and bolts simulation kind of thing. It, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It's it's more like a quantum computer. You know, it's it's, but it's not hardware and software. It's like you said, it's biological and, and electrical and I mean, everything's electric. I mean, and yeah. every, I don't know, but it, it's it actually makes more sense to me that it 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 was changed, that the simulation was changed um, than it actually does my mud flood theory that was done by man. But most people can't grasp that concept and so i gave them a possibility of how it could have been done by man right um and i could go either way it could have been even both <laughs> i don't yeah, know sure. <laughs> well and that's and that's the point that i make with some of the people that comment well what about melted buildings and so on and so forth and i say look you have to understand where i am first of all i'm in the prairies in canada and Calgary geographically is right. I mean, that's why I named my channel New West Reset. They call Calgary the gateway to the New West in Calgary. Yeah, I was just, wondering that. Okay, yeah, that like, makes like more sense. Now. Basically, 45-minute okay. drive due west of where I am, and you're in the Rocky Mountains. And our Rocky Mountains are so high and so tall that even in the summer, there's snow on the peaks of these mountains. Oh, wow. So they ain't high. melted buildings. They ain't melted buildings, okay? Unless they're you know, 13,000 foot building. Yeah, that on, on that point, I, okay, I, I used to live in the it. mountains of North Carolina and I actually have been inside of the mountains uh, in a gym mine. And mm -hmm. I, I went in there and I dug that rock with my own bare hands and a, and a, and a, a pickaxe and a, and a masonry uh, hammer. And yeah, I know, I can tell you without a doubt, 100% fact that there was not one single fucking red brick in that whole structure. In that whole, yeah. what I call a mountain, not once did I see a damn red brick. So these idiots that say everything is a melted red brick building have never done that. They've never been in there and they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. And it's insulting to my intelligence when they tell me that that, that I dug with my bare hands and pulled a fucking sapphire the size of my fist out of that rock is a yeah. melted red brick. Kiss my ass. Yeah, get, it, go pound sand with that. Yeah, yeah, get on down the road with that. It's insane. Well, see, and the other thing, the other thing about Calgary is that basically where Calgary is is where the flat prairies, the wheatlands, much like your your Midwest, your breadbasket of America, 
Same thing with our prairies, right? Manitoba, Saskatchewan, and Alberta. Mm -hmm. It's 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 all wheat lands. But where Calgary is is where the rolling foothills start. It's where that flat, bald ass prairie ends. And now you get to the rolling foothills and you go about 75 to 100 kilometers due west of where Calgary is. And then you get from the rolling foothills to the big jagged peaks of the Rocky Mountains. So you can see the progression of the land. So, right. but Calgary is kind of a bowl surrounded by these foothills. So my theory for Calgary is that whatever the event was, all the land, the dirt, the soil, the crap that's on these surrounding hilltops slid down into the bowl of where Calgary is, was, and you had anywhere from five to 15 feet, depending on the existing elevation of wherever the buildings were, of this land that got inundated with moisture and slid down that's what i'm okay i'm looking at calgary now i'm i'm seeing no what we call mountains near calgary or at least near enough to get the mud to calgary okay i would say the closest well, ones are these you gotta look at nose you gotta look at nose hill in calgary which is okay, a well, massive hill okay where where is that let me look at that in calgary when you go to Calgary, there it's that big green blob right above where it says Calgary. That that that's Nose okay. Hill. Okay, well let let's ignore that for just a second. Okay, if you look around, okay, there are no there are no mountains other than these, correct? That's correct. There's hills, okay. but no mountains. Hills, but no mountains. Now those mountains, in my opinion, okay, for what it's worth, are too far away to be a mud flood. Uh, culprit that they're I, agree. I don't know okay let's let me see let me measure the distance here let's do some actual scientific okay let's say the center of calgary that is 40 miles away okay i think in my opinion for what it's worth that that is too far away to transfer mud from the from this position 40 miles to this position now yeah, me too in my man-made theory, where I think they um, may basically made it rain somehow over an area and that created the mud, what if, and this is something I hear all the time, well, my area has no hills. Well, correct. If you made something, if you made enough rain on a hill long enough and it washed into mud, it's going to do what's called sluicing. And it's going yes, to dissolve. Gone. It's going to be gone. Yeah. This right yeah. here may be an old small mountain right here. And you have to wonder, is there a way to, I hate, dare I say the word, geologically test the soil here and the soil in, say, the middle of Calgary? Yeah. You know, because there might be some sort of sediment that they could say, well, wait a minute, that sediment came from Nose Hill. Maybe. I don't know. I'm just shooting yeah. out in the dark here. Well, if well, I had that to guess, river that runs. That's it right there. Okay, here's another thing. Yeah. Um, that's you know, my, my guess, too. My theory is that they came in with the trains, and you said the, the trains were right here. Um, and then you got the train going over this way and it goes right through town, right? I mean, yep. theoretically, they could have come <clears throat> in here, parked the train with this cloud buster weapon and pinpointed it, triangulated it over that hill, made it rain, and the mud came in. Now, here's another thing. What if, what if there was another hill we don't even know about? Well, you there's know? Scotsman Hill. Uh, there's um, it's even labeled Scotsman Hill. Where's that? Uh, at? Just a little south of where you are. Just a little south of that crossroads mark. There it is, Scotsman. Oh, zoom in a bit. There, that sort of teal-colored bubble it says Scotsman Hill. Scotch. Right beside the Scotia Bank. That right there. Uh, to your right, where it says Scotia Bank Saddle Dome. To the right of that, it says Scotsman Hill. 
oh, oh, I was looking somewhere else. Okay, yeah. Okay, so there's another hill right there. Well, see, that yeah. would be... I would even say that that is a better culprit, and I'll tell you why. Because when I was just... When I was in the mid-sentence of saying it ran into here, I realized, oh, yeah, there's a river right here. Okay? Well, this would be more of a candidate for... Um, this right here easily could be the culprit. Yeah. This right here could have come later, or they could have dug this out. Um, th this could have been something they added. This, you know, who knows? But, but that's that's all saying that a man made, and that's just my theory. I mean, I'm not saying it's. It, I'm I'm not saying I know how it happened. I'm just saying that's my theory. That's the best I got from a man-made perspective. I believe that if somebody took a cloud buster, they could rec recreate this event. Um, yep. Theoretically, you could take a cloud buster and make it rain over a hill and make the shit turn to mud. In theory, it's scientifically possible to test this theory of mine. Yeah. Of course, I don't... And know, I can't go by whether it was a man-made cataclysm or whether, whether it was a naturally occurring cataclysm. For my immediate area, it would have been some kind of mud flood or landslide or mudslide or whatever you want to call it. In my area, geographically, that's what it, I think it would have been. And you don't have the evidence of the quote unquote melted buildings where, you know, I don't see a damn melted building anywhere. Not near you. You know what I mean? Nope. So, yeah. Now, I mean, again, mind you. It's a boom town. They knock down the buildings they, real they quick say, here and build up the monstrosities real quick too. But I'm finding hundreds of old buildings, hundreds. Oh yeah, and and there's more when you start getting into the. I, my my from my experience, I will tell you if you'll start going into the histories and start looking at the buildings that were there originally, it's going to get so much more interesting to you. Than what you've already found because it's not even what's still there it's what was destroyed yeah oh yeah the uh the <laughs> old catholic cathedral in ruloville had onion domes on it it's gone oh wow did you have any but orphanages got, but i got pictures of it yeah you, you you had orphanages um yeah we had a couple of orphanages they're now schools because those are uh, possible um, old world buildings. Yeah. I would definitely look at those. I was looking at, um, you know, I, I, this is something that's a lot more difficult to figure out as if it's a, a viaduct city. Um, I don't know if you've seen my research on that, but the viaducts are... Uh, that's kind of a whole nother thing. Th this yeah, right those... here is technically a viaduct, um, mm -hmm. but you know it. That doesn't mean that it's what I'm. You know, this just could be a, a bridge. You know it. Yeah. What, what makes well, that? It I know a, is a modern. That I know is a modern bridge. Right, but it, this is the what you look for. You look for where they come in from it's either over a river or over a uh, interstate usually um, yeah. and what they do is they 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 bring you in and they change the grade um what they want to do is they want to make the grade of the entire city the same and so they create these viaducts which are basically raised platforms what you would call a bridge and they connect them and what will happen is, have you seen my video on atlanta underground the viaducts? Um, I don't think I have. I may have. Oh, oh, okay. But well, sure. if, if you haven't seen that one, I would highly suggest that one to you because what my um, what I showed in in that video is that Atlanta, Georgia, is a viaduct city, and what I mean by that is that the entire city is a viaduct. Oh, okay, okay. What that means is that everything you're looking at is okay. Let's say that this is Atlanta. built on a big platform, basically. Exactly. 
And yeah. what the, it'd be like you'd looking at this and every city is a raised platform, every single road. Right, right. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying this is. I'm just saying that this is how they do it. This, this you would see something like this. Um, now, getting determining that it's a viaduct city is is a much different. It's a much more complicated thing. Uh, Cleveland, Ohio, is a viaduct city. Um, there are others. Um, I can tell you as as you come into Calgary on any of the major thoroughfares, whether it's from the east, from the west, the south, or the north, you descend into the city as you as you're approaching the city okay i don't um i mean from what i'm seeing here is just a preliminary uh thought is that i don't think that your city is a viaduct city because it's such a a, a flat plain yeah you don't have the hills that we have uh well there's the a stampede grounds by the way where this there's a stampede yeah and how old is this? When did they build this? The grandstand was built in the 20s, but it's been renovated and remodeled several times. But okay. A lot of it is still the original grandstand. Well, if it's before 1943, I would look into it. At least give it a second glance. Oh, yeah, it was built in the 20s. I guess it's just been added on to since. Now that's not track is the old original. world. Um, that track is still the original track for the truck wagon races, the Rageland Derby. They have horse racing there, harness racing, all of that. And then in the center of the track, in the middle there, is where they have the actual rodeo, saddle bronc, bareback, bull riding, calf roping, so on. Wow. And then they have a big fairgrounds and a midway and rides and all that bullshit too, right? That's wild. Yeah, it's been going in that same location for annually for 100 years, but prior to that, it was sort of semi-annually for about 10 years. It's been going since about 1902, 1904, kind of somewhere in there, in the exact same spot. I'll, let me, uh, I'll show you, I've got one picture of the um, Atlanta viaducts that explains um what a viaduct is in in no better way than i could possibly explain it to you let me see um let me find that picture for you i did uh, my live stream in july because i do one a month and it's usually around the middle of the month my live stream in july was on the calgary stampede and the whole history of the stampede and i had a blast doing that live stream and everybody in the chat we were just having great old time yeah I, I, keep it up people really like live streams um you know it's something that i didn't originally start out doing it 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 takes a lot of effort to do that i don't think people realize how much you know goes into it to get it um you know to get it going um yeah like i just use Streamyard because it's real user friendly for a guy like me because i'm not exactly the most technologically savvy cat walking the walking the earth but uh yeah so it's real just real easy for me to use yeah i like Streamyard too um i thought you was winging it and it's script even if you're winging it and there's no you're not using a script you still have to prepare and it's, it's a lot of work you know gathering up photos or oh yeah or <laughs> bookmarking websites so you can share all the whatever it is you're going to talk about it yeah it's almost as much work as just blah bitty blahing in a half hour video and then editing all that putting pictures up you know checking all your sound and just uploading a half hour video yeah you know it takes like four hours to do a half hour video i i don't um i i do unscripted but uh you know there's still a lot of preparation behind it that you know Oh yeah, for I, sure. I don't. I, I I like pull pictures and I and thoughts of things I want to go talk about or look at, but I don't script it as to what I'm going to say. That's all from the, the the seat of my pants. And um, yeah, I don't know. Too, I learned I do the same. 
when I woke up, I watched a lot of uh, or listened to a lot of uh, Alex Jones, and so um, you know, listening to him, and he's he was unscripted, and I just yeah. took that to heart that uh, Tele- teleprompter free, teleprompter free over here. Yeah, I mean, and I like yeah. that. I mean, it's uh, I'm trying to find that picture. I I can't even find my own pictures now. Uh, I do the same thing. Like when I a lot of times I'll just be walking to work. And I'll purposely now take different routes or routes, whatever, however you want to say it, to and from work because I'll just, I'm like, okay, I know that there's a cool old two-story red brick house down this street that they say was built in 1885. So I'll just quickly on my way home, film it with my phone, get home, upload it, put my little intro at the beginning and my little, you know, my little outro at the end and that's it. Uh, Let me, I'll tell you what. This is the picture, but let me uh, let me download it and and then I can zoom in on it. All right. Yeah, that looks pretty interesting. I'll explain to you what you're seeing because it's this 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 will explain this. There's only one picture uh, of this that I have found. Um, they don't want you to know this stuff, um, but uh, um. Oh, which one is it? It's this one. But um, let me know when you see that picture. Yeah, I see it. Okay, this is Atlanta, Georgia. And this is when they were putting in the, uh, the viaducts. And the viaduct, if you'll see, you've got a building here and a building here. And you notice that they put, this is today's street level. Okay, yeah. They come in and they would put in these uh, pieces here, and then they would put in a steel uh, beam here, and they would just do that down the road and then put in bridge, sec- build a bridge, basically a bridge over top of that, the street over top of that. But you have all this underneath Atlanta. Yeah. Well, and I can and, see where they built up the road there, right to the right of where that little wooden fence is. You can see there's a street level door there. Right. And and there's used are to be a window, obviously. Of, uh, in Atlanta, there's sections. There's a place called the, the Gulch, and it's 40 feet deep. The, the, the viaduct is 40 feet deep. Holy smokes. Imagine yeah, what's under that. <laughs> So and that look, forty feet, no joke. That's a lot of room. Hell yeah! I mean, and and they they pass it off. Oh, we wanted to run the subway under here, right? That's, or the sewage, the pipes. It. Yeah. And today, I'll I'll show you um, I'll show you what it looks like today. Let's see. No. I'll show you what it looks like today. Um You got are you seeing what I'm looking at? Yeah, yeah, I see. Okay. It. Now, today uh today um uh, you go into Atlanta. See if I could find the gulch for you. You can actually see it um Oh wait, I think I just saw it. I think the gulch is uh I think might be it right there. That's the there's one space I think this is the gulch right here, but I'm not positive. I haven't looked at this in a while. But every, what I'm saying is everything in in this area here at least now i don't know i haven't done the research to go further out than this but this area right here is all viaduct i've confirmed every road it's all viaduct and if you see how it comes in on these bridges that's a viaduct Mm -hmm. yep okay yep And, and there's places that you can still see what they've done you just have to know how to look for it and what to look for um there's a a place 
Let me see if I can find it. Um, it should be it should be right here. You see anything that says underground? Let's see. Okay, there it is. Okay, this right here is a place they call Underground Atlanta. Okay. And it is literally this area right here, okay? It, that's all it is. And they, they have this complete underground shopping center there, right? And it's got the old, they use the old world bottom floors as the shops, okay? Oh, I get you. Yeah, yeah, okay. But all this is is a cover-up for the fact that the entire city is that way. Yeah. And people don't know this. And so I came out with a video. Um, it's got 8,500. It, it, it shot up to uh, 7,500 views. It's got like 8,600 now. But it shot up to 8,500 or 7,500 views in one week. And then YouTube clamped it. And they won't let it... Uh, they won't let it out of the gate anymore. But this whole area is a platform. Every bit of what every street, every city street you see here is a platform. It's a raised platform. And you just have to know how to look at it in order to see it properly. Yeah. That's you crazy. see what I'm saying? You yeah, just you have to have the right in, in eye. Between. In between, in between some of those buildings, buildings, you can see it shoots way down there. Way down there. Yes, it, it is absolutely undeniable. See that? I mean, it, once yeah. you see it, it's like, fuck! <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's, that's not a bridge, though. That's a road. Oh, wait, that ain't a road. It's a whole city block. Oh, wait, it's not the whole city block. It looks like pretty much all the downtown core. Yeah. And you can see where when you zoom out a bit where it highlights the roadways you can see all the roads coming into the elevated section right yeah 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 and there's 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 i have a whole list of cities that people are sending me that they're saying i i think my city is a viaduct city and they'll so i have a whole list of these right things right i've got to check out curse Right by your cursor there, where you just where you could see there's a huge wall that goes up to that little green space, that little park, that little pie-shaped green space there, Mayor's Path or whatever that says, or Mayor's Park. But uh -huh. look at that huge wall. Yeah. Right, so that everything is at that same level now as the top of that retaining wall. Right. For blocks and blocks and blocks and blocks. You notice yeah. how flat it is. <laughs> It's yeah. all flat. And if you look at the old pictures, the, the, the roads are hills. Yeah. And now the hills are gone in the pictures. Now, I'll show you another city that's a, that I've determined 100% is a, a viaduct city, and that is Cleveland, Ohio. Um, and Cleveland, I learned this when I was doing my... um. My Christmas video, my my uh, Christmas story video, uh, right. and I was looking at this city, um, and this is actually how I figured out viaducts is through uh, through this city. Let me get my bearings here. Um, and what I learned, okay, give me a second. It takes me a second to get my. Every time I go to these cities, I have to reorient my myself okay that is okay wait a minute ah okay i got myself now okay there is a building right here okay you see this big sucker right here mm -hmm. that's a okay. beauty by the way that's a real oh real beauty. yeah I, I think it's old world. Um, it has a later a later date. It was built, you know, built in like the 1920s or 30s or some shit like that. But I think it's old world. Um, but the way I figured this out was that I realized that there were construction pictures of this 
building. And in the construction picker, pictures, you could clearly see the underground here around this uh -huh. building. Okay. And so then when I started looking around, I realized that you could still see this underground underneath the viaduct. Yeah, there it is right there. Yeah, look at that. Okay, now, then I came over here, and you can see it. Oh, yeah. And look right here. Yeah. See that? Huh. And then another place that you can see it real good is over here. You can see the edge of it right here. Yeah, look at that. See that? Look how so high that, that wall is. That wall is so huge. That is a viaduct. And then if you read into the history of it, of Atlanta, you learn that there is actually, it's like, okay, here, here's the way I figured. I figured out that this is a viaduct, right? But I didn't know what a viaduct was. Matter of fact, when I met, when I when I talked to Campbell and when I talked to Martin, um, I, I asked them about this. I said, do you know about the viaducts? And they said, um, there's a confirmed underground underneath this too. But all this has got underground, every bit of this. And I said, I made the, the little comment. I said, do you know about the viaducts? And they said the, the aqueducts. Both of them said the same thing. Oh, they thought I you said, were mistaking viaducts for aqueducts. Uh, right, and I said, no, 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 no. I said, these are viaducts. And they're like, well, I don't know what you're talking about. And so I explained it to them, and they still didn't know what I was talking about. I'm like, okay, it's time for a video. So that's when I made my video. And um, I was going to do Cleveland, but in the process of doing Cleveland, I ran across um, Atlanta, and I'm like, wait a minute. And when I looked into Atlanta, um, they actually talk about the the viaduct building that they did. They actually have a history, not much of a history, but there is actually a history written where they built the viaducts. Well, I'll be. And so it, it's like, well, wait a minute. Why is this not known? Yeah, why if it's and if it's easy to find, why isn't it common knowledge for even for people that leave, live in Cleveland? I don't know. And then it's Hell, like, I know a, I know a guy that lives in Cleveland. Really? Yeah. <laughs> and you ought to ask him about it. And I bet she's never heard of it. Yeah. Um, I, I'm trying to think of another city. I, I think uh, it's either. I want to say. Uh, Cincinnati was another one that people have recommended. Um, and I haven't looked into any others like on an actual research level. Um, it's just, you know, time. But um, I have a list of these things because I started collecting the names of the cities when I did that video because so many people were sending me, uh, you know, names of cities. They're like, I, I think my city's like this, you know. But it's it's a complicated thing to figure out because most of the cities don't have any um, history of it. And then, uh, oh, uh, Knoxville, Tennessee has a confirmed ha has been confirmed. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. That's another one uh, that that is actually, uh, you know, it's just in how you you ha see right right there is a, a little bit of. You know, something yeah. interesting, the way that looks. I haven't looked into this one. It's just, I know it's on my list of, of people have sent this and said, hey, look at my city, you know, what do you think? Because, I, you know, there's something going on here. And that, and kind no of goes, that goes hand in hand with what I was saying with why I started my channel is, you know, I wanted people to go out like, you don't even have to be Canadian. I mean, I don't care where you're from. It doesn't matter to me. The point is get out there and look at, your own stomping grounds with a critical eye because I'm willing to bet you're going to find all kinds of crazy anomalies, whether it's viaducts, whether it's mud flooded windows, whether it's crazy copper domes with weird tech that doesn't look like it belongs. You know, right. and we've seen time and time again that it's not just big cities. It can be some little town in the middle of nowhere. 
I mean, Caleb's proven that time and time again, just, just in Utah, for crying out loud. Just in one state, in one country. Right. Yeah, it, it, he he is a of a, if you ask him, he, he will tell you that he thinks it's actually um, easier to prove mud flood through the small towns than the big cities. Um, I, I, I tend to go with the, the, that it's both, that you could prove it with both um, just as easy. <clears throat> um, well, but I, I think he, he has a great see where he's coming from because a smaller town in the middle of nowhere may not change as much over decades as a bigger city where they're constantly knocking down and rebuilding. But, you know, if it's a town of 500 people, they don't need some big brand new building necessarily. They I think just that's more his do point. With what they've got, right? Yep. However, with that said, when you get into a bigger city, you can find a greater number of buildings, though. So uh, yeah, right. I see what you're saying. It can be kind of both, depending on how you want to do your your research, right? Right. It, it's uh, yeah. It, it, th there's there's good uh, points to be made by both ways. I, I don't I don't stick to either one. I think both are like I I didn't uh, when I went to look at Raleigh. Um, you know, that's my hometown, and I, I just, I, I, I wanted to research somewhere that um, I felt, I felt had, uh, you know, that I could, when I wanted to research a city that, that I could add something to, and I thought, where, what, what city could I do? And I thought, well, why don't I just do Raleigh, because that's, you know, that's where I grew up. And then I right. thought, well, you know, this is going to suck, because there's nothing in Raleigh. You know, I thought, well, I've been in, you know, I know all about Raleigh. I know every inch of this city, and there's nothing in Raleigh. And I came in with the attitude that, well, I'm going to prove this wrong. And I realized very quickly that I didn't know shit about my town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> kind of what I've come to find out about Calgary, too, you know. So, and again, coming from Montreal... <laughs> From out east, I mean, there's brick buildings everywhere. I mean, you just build a modern house with brick because you can't swing a dead cat without hitting brick out there, so it's cheap. And then I'll moving out here, and I noticed there wasn't as many. And as a kid, I said, I even, I even remember asking my dad, how come all the houses and buildings look different? And he said, well, what do you mean? And I said, well, the, like our house in Montreal, well, not right in Montreal, but our house in Montreal was, had, was a brick house, but it was a new house. And he said, yeah, no, no, they didn't have a lot of brick in Calgary, son. They used sandstone and yada, yada. Instead, <laughs> sandstone's everywhere. And I'm like, oh, okay, daddy. And now fast forward, you know, a few decades later, and I'm like, well, wait a second. There's, I'm seeing brick buildings all over the place. Right. And not modern buildings. Sure, some of them after the railroad, but some of them prior to the railroad, even by their own narrative. Exactly. So that's why I was like, yeah, same as you. Like, I don't know, I don't know diddly squat about Calgary. I thought I did, but I don't. I'm going, I'm trying to find a building, a specific building to show you, to give you a, this, this will be, my brain's a little fried. I'm trying to think of the name of the building. Um, Edward, I think it's Edwards. No. Oh boy, um, hold on. <laughs> oh, there's so many buildings. It's it's they all blend together at some point. Um, there's a um, a building that uh, four square. I do the same thing. I have I have a couple of subscribers that live here in Calgary. And they're like, hey, why don't you go check out such and such place or such and such house? And I got to the point where I literally had gone old school and I actually keep a notepad and a pen and I actually physically write it down on a notepad. Go check out the Hart House. Go and check out the, you know, this building, that building. Oh, yeah. Otherwise, I'll yeah. forget. Oh, I, I, I keep a, I just keep a, a pad right by my desk where um, I can, um, you know, I'll write down a name of a building and then I'll be like, well, what the hell did I write that down for? And then I'll go look for it. And um, it's like, holy crap. <laughs> like, yeah. when did I learn about that? I don't even know. 
Yeah. Oh, That's there it is. Here. I've gone and checked out a couple of buildings that were suggested by folks that live here in the city that are yeah. subscribed. And they were they were tickled that somebody in Calgary is doing this kind of content. Man, I'm trying to find this one particular building. Okay, I found. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. You're in South Carolina, right? I'm in North Carolina. Oh, you're in North Carolina. Oh, my, I apologize. My mistake. It's it's a it's a <laughs> America's kind of all one hodgepodge of crap. I don't know what it's like up there, but this place sucks. <laughs> well, we've got a pretty uh, our our. Our our leader is very socialist leaning, lefty oh, socialist really? leaning. Yeah. Well, we're, yeah, we're just, fascist Justin here, Trudeau. So. <laughs> Justin Trudeau is his name, and he's a uh, he's a bloody socialist dictator. Yeah, yeah, I've heard I've heard of him. Yeah, hey, well, you know, it, it's it's all fascism. It's it's that's what we're that's what they want. Ah, here we go. I found it finally. Okay, all right. I got to show you. I got to show you this in the right order. That's the there there. Have do you know what brutalist facading is? Yeah, where they purposely make it look ugly, so that you walk yes. by and don't pay attention, kind of thing. Correct. They take what was perhaps once an aesthetically pleasing looking building and they just make it look utilitarian and kind of fugly. Exactly. Okay. Now let me, I'm going to share screen with you and, um, Oh, start sharing. Let me know when you see that. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, I see it. This building my whole life at least okay from from me being a child until um i woke up in 2008 and it was actually i think later that they did this but my whole life this this little building right here i passed by it all the time mm -hmm. and it was a bank shitty little building absolute crap right yeah no reason to enjoy this building or look at this building or give a damn about what the history of this building is. Now, you're you're about to get a lesson in brutalist facading, okay? Recently, uh, they uncovered the building. Can you see this? I might need uh, to switch screens. Is it the same? Same, okay. yeah. It's okay, same. let me let me. Uh, I'm gonna have to switch. I'm gonna have to switch screens. Yep. Okay. Let me know when you see it. Oh, yeah. Look at that. That what is the same fucking building. They took what the brutalist facading off. That is the original building. What a gorgeous building. Are you kidding me? That's a beauty. Come on. Why would they cover that? Well, we know why they were covered up, but... It 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 was a bank, and there's a vault. There's a it's a confirmed lower levels below here. Mm -hmm. There's there's a vault down there. I don't even think this is the original first floor. And then there's a picture. Um, let's see if I can show it. This is an that's an I got a better one. Wait a minute. This is an old picture of it. And before it was a bank, it was a. Uh, the coffin house. It was the it was the the funeral home. It oh, was where okay. they built the coffins, and you. It was like the big funeral home in Raleigh, North Carolina, and um. But this is what it looked like. But my whole life, it looked brutalist facade, just like this. That's what I knew that building. So when they undid that building, and I'm doing my research, I'm like, what the hell building is that? I've yeah. never seen that building. And yeah. I when I realized where this was, I used to drive by this building like 
every day and never even noticed it. No, you wouldn't even look at it. You wouldn't even have a reason to even look up at it. But that, that's a beauty. <laughs> so this is a lesson in brutalist facading. It does not, to me, does not get any better of a lesson in what they've done to cover over what was here. Yeah, I mean, people would be fawning and tripping over themselves to open a business in a building like that compared to the ugly facade. Today well, it's I, a I, bar. I'd like sit down and eat my lunch on that little bench right out by that door. A guy could sit down there and just enjoy it. And chill. But that old, that, the, the previous monstrosity with the brutalist facade, see, that's, you got to choke back puke. Never mind enjoying uh, lunch. That's another, this is the corner of the building. I don't think I have any, any more, um, any more pictures of it, but you know, that, that, that right there is the best I can do to explain brutalist facading to anybody. Yeah. In, in the simplest terms of what, here's the thing that, okay. I, I can give you another example in the same place. Let me uh, let me share screen. Um, there is a, a a street in Raleigh called Fayetteville Street. It's the main street going down. This is the original. What they say is the original main street of Raleigh. Okay. Okay. Now, originally, all the way down this road, there were the the small buildings like you have. Yeah. And you'll see there's still some of them left. They're right yeah. here. Yeah. Okay. They were all the way down the street. Now, at one time, this is supposedly one of the oldest buildings in Raleigh. This one right here. Okay. okay. This is called uh, Briggs Hardware. Now, these, this is uh, uh, Boylan Pierce. Um, and these buildings my whole life were brutalist facaded. OK, so every when I walked down here when I was young, all of this was brutalist facaded and they matter of fact, I may even be able to show you. No, it's not going to show down if you go further down the road. Um, I don't think I'm going to be able to show you that there. I'd actually have to go in. If I I have pictures that w will explain this one day out when I get get it done, but um, where everything is brutalist facaded, and it all see like this is brutalist facade. Yeah, right? so everything looked like that. Yeah, and so see, they took it one they took it one step further than the crappy signs and the crappy awnings, and they just put up a whole new frontage to the building, a whole new face. They, they they just put metal facade over the top of the front of the buildings. They 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 covered over them, stuck over over them. Um, I, I was hoping I could show it to you on the uh, the satellite, but it's not it's not bringing up. I might let me let me try here. Sometimes going backwards, it it changes. See, there's a brutalist facade right there um, that. I don't know if you just saw that change. I'm going to change it. Well, let me change it back. No, that's no. I think they okay. This uh, it's not okay. I know just from my research, this right here is actually an old world opening. It has the the fancy you know arches and everything here, right, but they put yep. this crap over front of it. Um, now another example that they do is right here okay you got this is a really old building this is the post office and if if you look right here you got mud flood windows right yep and you go to the front and it's you know it's it's got that you know the old world look and everything now if you go right here you would say there's mud flood windows there, right? Okay. Yep. Now, you go to the back. Okay, it looks like this. Now, what I'm going to tell you, this is where you have to do. 
where real research comes into play. You've got to be on your A game when you do this. And the reason is only half of this building is a mud flood building. And I'll tell you why. In, I believe, the 50s, they, they added half of this building, the back half, and they mirrored what was on the front. Oh, so they could integrate it and make it seamless. Seamless. So what you see today is not the original building. The original building, and I think that they've done a lot of, of facading on, the, on this too and changed this because this doesn't even match the old pictures as much as I remember. I'll probably have to go and do more looking at that, but this right here was the original building. And now it looks exactly the same on the back. You can't tell the difference. If you split this building right down the middle, all this is new. Oh, wow. Now there was another, um, here's an, this one's kind of hard to explain, but at one time there was a real nice old world hotel right here. Matter of fact, there was old world buildings all down this road right here. There's pavement light right here. Oh, That's yeah, an old that. world building right there. And right here was a place called the Academy of Music. Now it's the courthouse. And there was a major underground here, and it went all there was pavement light all across here and all the way down here. And they came in and they regraded this road. It used to have a huge hill here. And they regraded the road to make it less of a grade. Oh, so this, okay. this is another thing you have to look out for is what's called regrading. This is not the original grade of the road. This used to have, and I can show in pictures how this had a huge dip right here. I mean, it was a great sledding hill. So it, you know, there's, it, it's a very, very complicated thing we're dealing with. Now here, here I'll, I'll show you another one. That this is uh, our prison was right here. Now today, I, this is Central Prison. They, they, it's called Central Prison, but originally it was called State, the State Penitentiary of North Carolina. And it was located right here. Okay, it was this whole area. It was a huge, like, bat wing style five story son of a bitch. Okay, I see what you're saying. And the original wall is right here. Oh, yeah, okay. And you can even see the original guard towers, too. Yep. And. That thing is big. That this satellite doesn't do it justice. That is a big wall. But that is that was attached to the building that was right here. And then we had over here we had another bat wing, and this was the insane asylum. And they brutalist facaded this. You can't even tell that this was even a nice building. It's completely stuccoed over. Yeah, there's a, <clears throat> there's a building here that uh, just basically three block, four blocks from my place. And same thing, I used to walk by it all the time and never give it a second look because it was ugly. They covered it in all that corrugated sheet metal. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Yeah. But one thing always struck me as odd is the main entrance to the building was on the corner of the building instead of on one of the flat sides of the building. Huh? And I thought, well, that's weird because you don't see modern buildings much like that anymore. So I looked into it. Turns out that building was built in the 1890s and it was beautiful <laughs> old red brick and sandstone building. So I found original black and white pictures of it. And it was a gorgeous old building and now it just looks like a piece of crap. And I, I think that's in my latest video that I uploaded. Uh, what are we at here? Sunday? So Friday. No, today. Earlier today. The, Earlier today you, know, we were, you were talking about the, the, the school with the smokestack and the, you know, the steam. And I was telling you about the steam plant. Yeah. 
this is the original steam plant to that insane asylum right here and it used to have a smokestack right here oh okay and it was yeah. so it was near the building and that was the original steam for this facility yeah and they would just pump the steam directly from the steam house or this right it right it under the ground through pipes right into the building yep the original um uh steam plant for uh See if I can find it. The original steam plant for Raleigh, the city was um, over here. Now it's a bar, but it the steam plant was right here, and um, the trolleys. This was the trolley house. This is where they came and brought the trolleys to fix them. Oh, okay. This building right here. And they would bring them in from this side here, in through a door here. And then there was an, like the underground, um, they had a, like some kind of system where they, the mechanics could go underneath the trolleys over underneath this side. Yeah. So it, it actually, um, you see it goes uphill, but this is the old trolley barn. But see, if you don't do the research, you're going to look at this and you're going to think there's nothing to that. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, you have no idea that that used to be the trolley maintenance barns and that that's where they worked on the trolleys. How would you know? How would you know this is the old steep plant? How would yeah. you know there used to be a, a, a smokestack here? How would you know that the, the original uh, turbines are still in the building? How would you know? Yeah, that's like the old pump house that I shot last summer. That's just five minute walk from my place here. It's now just a community theater and uh, art gallery, and they do you know artsy fartsy stuff over there. But it still has all the original mechanics inside from the eighteen nineties or no nineteen ten, I think is the narrative on it, something like that. Nineteen hundred, give or take a decade, right? And. Uh, right. It still has all the old machinery and everything in there, the old pumps and all of that stuff. Absolutely. This is an old uh, um, Second Empire house. Uh, and this one, it actually, um, this right here looks, this is modern, this piece right here. But what you do is you go down some stairs right here and it takes you into an underground bar underneath. This is now a restaurant. And so this whole thing has an entire underground level that you could go in and have a beer and dinner in today. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Now, the, the, the restaurant, they actually have a restaurant on this level and then they have catered uh, restaurant up here catering rooms but then the there is an entire bar underneath here and the entrance is right here but how would you know that i mean you know it, it's a it's an upscale five-star star restaurant how yeah, would exactly. you know that you wouldn't so anyways that's that's uh that's kind of about where it is but uh i tell you i got a I got to get going. I got to work in the morning. I got this dog. He's ready to go out. So I need to. All right. All I need right, to dude. head on. Yeah, me too. I got to work tomorrow too. But it's not as late here. It's only a quarter to eight here. So. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, it's almost 10 here. 9.45. Yeah. But well, I, I enjoyed yeah, the pleasure. conversation. Yeah, me too. I really enjoyed it, Biggs. Thank you very much for the invite. Appreciate it. Uh, we'll have to do it again when you have the time. No problem. I, 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 I love to talk. Um, I'm not as big an asshole as a lot of people think I am. Um, it's just a, it's a matter of people that they can't uh, get their perspective out of their ass. So, well, you know, you gotta, you, you gotta, you gotta stand by your, your, your laurels. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, you know, yeah, and, and there is a certain amount of infiltration in communities like this. And I think some of it, too, is yeah. just people want to, for whatever reason, they want to try to, I'm going to reinvent the wheel to make a name for myself so I can compete against Coca-Cola and be, <laughs> you know, one of the big dogs and yeah. get lots of views and lots of subs. Instead of just doing the 
as much proper research as they can, be in themselves and let their channel grow naturally through networking and doing stuff like you and I done tonight and just interacting with the people that comment and your on your videos and sitting down and doing a little bit of the, the tough stuff before you do the fun stuff. That just makes the fun stuff more fun. I'm not asking you to to believe everything I say. That that's a you do that. That's on your you have your own thoughts, your own opinions. I'm I'm not here to change your mind. It's just a matter exactly. of I listen to your ideas and you listen to my ideas. It's a, it's a it's a you know a back and forth and and we share the ideas and then we share this with the public and the public they hear and they get ideas and maybe it reciprocates around. But when you close yourself off and you don't allow people to to have their voice and and to talk back and forth and you say no you're not going to talk you're not we're not going to hear your opinion then nothing gets done yeah the best way to do it i always think is just even if somebody's a babbling idiot you let them say what they got to say because they're just hanging themselves with their own rope anyways and you don't even have to do nothing you know, everybody eventually is going to, if you let them talk long enough, everybody eventually is going to see that they're a, an idiot or a goof or a charlatan or a snake oil salesman or whatever. And they, just, they hang themselves, right? Or they have such a huge spotlight shining on them that uh, because you just let them run and let them go and just every once in a while point out, what do you think of you know, what he's saying over here? A guy thinks this fool's a little bit, uh, a little bit crazy. But you let them go, and eventually they expose themselves. I think, anyway. I mean, I'm 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 not real popular with a lot of folks right now, but that that's okay with me because I I know that I'm trying to to push this research forward, and we've got a lot of junk in our way that we need to get worked through. And by not talking, you're never going to get anywhere. Without like when people stop being nice. You know, and and say like it is. That's when you start moving forward because people holding their tongue ain't gonna get you nowhere. Right, and I, I try to expose myself to different opinions of what we discuss. Yeah. You know, the, these blanket terms like Tartaria and mud flood. I, I try to watch. You know, like I, I hey, I watch a war stuff because I want to hear what he has to say. So do but I. I also, <laughs> but I watch. I watch you. I watch John Levi. I watch Jared Boosters. I watch as much as I can. Absolutely, I watch Wood Nichols too, and I don't agree with everything they say. I, I don't do agree too. Everything I do that John too. Levi says, I don't agree with everything you say. But the nice thing about it is we can still have a, a pleasant time with one another and share the ideas that we do agree on. And we're not going to squabble over the minor details because overall, bigger pictures, we're on the same page. And how do we find that out? By talking. Exactly. Exactly. That's that's it right there. Well. I, right, I sure appreciate your time, and uh, um, I appreciate yours as well. Thank you. Thank I'll you, uh, feel free to if <clears throat> I usually will go in there and edit these things up a little bit. If take out anything that needs to be taken out, um, and uh, um, if you want to, uh, it's it's kind of long, so it'll probably just be a separate video. But if you want to uh, post it on your channel or if. Uh, um, if you want me to edit it together and then uh, send it to you so you can just, just load it up on your channel or if you want to do it a different way, however you want to do it, it's up to you. Um, there's no particularness to it. And uh, okay. share, yeah, yeah. share yeah, it with the people because the people love these it, yeah. conversations. <laughs> yeah, they I'm love hearing us you know, th throw things against the wall and see what, what sticks because you, you don't know. Who knows? <laughs> You know? I'll probably just upload, if I may, the whole thing as it is and just put tack on my little intro and and outro on it and just do a title card at the beginning saying, you know, this is my nice my nice chat with Stuff Beagle on such and such a date and, and then Bob's your uncle, you know. Go go for it. That, All right. That's great. I appreciate it. You do it you you do what you will. Um it, it's uh you know, I, I appreciate your time. I, I I want to do more of these things with people. Um, it's it's hard to get people together. Um, yeah. But uh, you know, well, crazy schedules and time zones and all that. But yeah. you're more, you know, you're more, more than welcome out in my neck of the woods, out in the out in the sticks anytime. You know that. <laughs> out out here in the scrub brush of Alberta, anytime yeah. you want to come on my show, uh, you're more than welcome. There's a cool. couple of 
a couple of what, folks in the, in what the day do you do your show do you, do you have a certain day that's that's set or well for my live stream is just in the middle of the month that was kind of usually kind of even on a wednesday because i tend to upload on sundays and wednesdays okay but this most recent i did a poll with some of my audience asking them and most people found that weekends were better for them so now i'm going to switch to when i do a live for me it'll be on a sunday you know you can go to youtube and go into the algorithm uh, not the algorithm the, into the the um analytics and you can look and you can see exactly when your viewers are most active yeah 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 i have done that and they're most active i don't I've, do it I, I just do it whenever the hell i feel like doing which is Wednesday yeah. night. but yeah, yeah you know well I, I do know that they're most active for me on my channel after 6 p.m my time and that's pretty much every day of the week but they're much more heavily active for longer periods over the weekends so yeah, and I know generally there's more traffic on the weekends. Most people perhaps don't work on weekends. My schedule's all over, so for me, it doesn't I would matter. love to do mine on the weekends, but I've got um, I have to deal with uh, um, some work things on weekends that I have zero control over, and it just totally fucks my whole weekend up every weekend, yeah. and I yeah. can't plan shit. It's like I told you that we'll do this if you know if if, if I can make it happen, I will, and you yeah. Know, this morning I woke up, didn't think I was working, and then by ten thirty I was working. So, yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, that and that's why I appreciate your time and the invite, and that's why I appreciate all your help in working out the bugs when we were first trying to kick this thing off, too. Oh, no problem. I I get it, man. I I get it. <laughs> I've dealt with this shit so much that I, <laughs> man, it's frustrating. Yeah, yeah. It's, there, it's, it's, you know, it can get a guy's tail ruffle we'll say that well if you need uh advice uh on anything with anything youtube or whatever if you have any questions just hit me up i'm i'm uh i'm real i i do a lot of uh, me we is uh real easy for me um uh -huh. yeah that's the easiest way to kind of get my attention because i'm i'm kind of in and out of there all the time and uh it's a easy way to transfer information um yeah yeah, that's but, why I joined uh, up on there too, and I created my own profile over there too. Because absolutely, again, yes, for a it's guy great. like me who's kind of not the most technologically savvy feller walking, it's it's real easy for me. I can just be like, "Wow, look how easy this is!" It's free. It's easy. I just followed Campbell. Campbell did it, and um, you know, I thought, well, why don't I do that? So you know, follow. follow you know, I'm with stupid. <laughs> you know what I mean, yeah, why yeah. not? You know, what I mean, it, oh, it by the way, stupid. real quick. Real quick, have you been talking to uh, Billy Philly down? He's down your neck of the woods too, isn't he? Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I like their channel. There, that's I like their stuff. Yeah, they're they're uh, very green. Um, they're very new to everything, but I see potential in what they're doing, and um, I give them all the encouragement I can because me too. You know, I love. I think it's. I think. I think it's great come. that it's a husband and wife team. That's uh, what I said. Yeah. And I think it's great Original. how they play off each other. And and I mean, we're all still learning. And I, I know that I screw shit up on my videos. I love how he, he'll, she'll, she, like, he, he won't, he'll be filming and she'll go check a door. He's like, honey, what are you doing? She's like, I'm checking the damn door. <laughs> yeah. What do you do? No, don't do that. And she'll just walk right in. He's like, oh, fuck. You know? Yeah, I love that. <laughs> I mean, if he, if she wasn't there, we wouldn't get the video that, that, he's getting because she's got that curiosity that he's more you know he's more logical i'm gonna get arrested if i do this she's more yeah. like fuck it yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah so i think it's great yeah i think it's great yeah That's yeah great. I, I talk to them a lot i talk i talk to joe quite a bit he's he's a great guy yeah yeah oh yeah 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 he, yeah, he, he texted me this morning matter of fact but uh of course, he he seems to text me at five thirty in the morning a lot. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I think he I think he goes to work real early. <laughs> yeah, he does because he's a plumber. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. So I, I yeah I usually don't even get to uh, text him back until later, but because he texts so early, it's just like, oh, I'm not talking right now. But uh, well, I've uh, I've invited him onto my show too, but we just haven't been able to work it work it out. But uh, well, just uh, just do what I'm doing here. Do a recording. It, this it, look, it, not everybody can be at a certain place at a certain time. You can just do a recording, 
Yeah. And, um, then put you it can up later. Yeah. Put it up later. Yeah. It's a yeah. different dynamic than a live show. When you're live, it's kind of fly by the seat of your pants. But yeah, the thing I like about live is the real time interaction with everybody in the chat too. I love that. Yeah, yeah. It I like that, and it's it's that's something that I've been you know enjoying. Um, it, it, I'm, it, it's also hard to get people to ask questions. I think a lot of people are afraid to ask questions, but uh, if you can get them riled up to where they're going to yeah. ask some questions, it gets real good. <laughs> you know? yeah, sure. yeah, it does. It does. <laughs> well, I had a great time in your last one. So, and I've been around a couple of times in yours that, you know, if I'm home and I'm not working and uh, they're fun. I, I'm they're learning. Fun. I, I've been trying different things to, to get people, to jerk people's chain, to get them to, to just, to talk and ask questions and so me and oz are trying different things and we're starting to learn a few tricks that um i think it'll make it better um yeah i'm not gonna be perfect i'm not i'm not striving to be perfect i'm just trying to do the best i can with what i got with what i know and and go from there that's that's all any <laughs> of us can do sir that's all any of us can do all right i'll let you go so you can get some food in you and get some food in your pups and uh thanks again i really really appreciate it bigs it's, no problem. Uh, no problem. You, and You're thanks for everything you do for with your channel and your research too, and for uh, all your uh, helpful pointers. It's it does not go unnoticed. So thank you. Well, I, I appreciate you too. And, uh, just keep up the good work. The boots on the ground. That stuff. You and I stress this to Billy Philly is that you can get images that we cannot get from the, the internet because there's there's only so much I can zoom in on Google Earth. The pictures are taken from ground level. Um, mm -hmm. And when you're getting up there on the ground, you can get that video and that those images that cannot be gotten any other way. And so it's imperative that we get boots on the ground video. So I highly encourage boots on the ground. Well, thank you. And I have fun doing <laughs> them too. So that's, so that's important, I think. Well, Frankie from New West Three Set, I sure appreciate your time, and uh, we will see you, see you soon. And um, I'll uh, talk to you on the flip side. All right, take care. All right, thanks. I'll thanks again. I'll see you soon. All right, have a good Adios. one. Have a good one. Hey. <laughs>